watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. Guys, we are back, and I have a big video game character to control. As you can see, I am a gamer. The Yizzle has become Steve. So we are here today to usher in the last week of Halloween Max for 2023. Here on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. It's not sad. Don't you worry. You can always go back and watch the four weeks of plentiful Halloween specials here on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. Which brings me to the next thing. We want you to share one of our videos and get that link and send it in to us. Why would we want you to do that? Why, Steve, would we want you to do that? So that I can be entered to a chance to for the giveaway. That is absolutely right. We have a giveaway that is active right now. And as I just said, all you have to do is Go share one of your favorite videos that we have already aired and just get that link. Send it in to us, smc.maxout at gmail.com or you can send it to us right here in the comments to this video. Oh yes, either way, we'll get it. But just send it in so you can be entered into the chance for the giveaway, which will be a wonderful smorgasbord of Halloween goodies. Steve! We just wanted to make sure that Steve was still operating properly. Make sure that you head over and check out our Instagram, check out our Facebook, and make sure that you hit up KJ and the Yizzle on YouTube. Go over there, check out our videos, and give us a like and a subscribe, won't you, my dears? Now, Steve! Oh, excuse me. Now, Steve! What, pray tell, do they need to do at this minute in time? They need to go get themselves a heaving roll of their favorite part of a balanced breakfast. And they like to eat Blossios. It's alive! Make sure. Make sure that you hang out right here from 8 to 12. Eat the Saturday time. Right here in the only place to be for Saturday mornings and for creepy Minecraft characters on Halloween! Fat Albert Halloween Special! Hey, hey, hey! Gotta get those costumes today! Yeah! Root and Rummage, they got a lot of cool Halloween costumes for tonight. I'm gonna give me a superhero costume. I'm gonna be a monster. What do you mean, gonna be? You already are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Root, me and Devra here want some service. We got a whole dollar eighty-seven to spend clear. Yeah, knock it off. Don't you see I'm busy with Mrs. Bakewell? <laughs> Okay, we'll uh, just look around a bit. Ah! <laughs> What's with you, Fat Albert? Don't you see that spooky old lady Bakewell? So what? So what? She lives in that creepy old house by the cemetery. Yeah, she sneaks around, never hardly talks to nobody. She's weird. She's no weirder than any other old woman. That's the trouble. All old people are weird. Hey, Rudy! Hand me that ladder. Whoa! 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 Ah! Hey, 
Hey, you kids, out. Six fat hours, just like Debbie said. Old people are mean. Hey, hey, hey. Dig these cool homemade outfits. Yeah, who needs store-bought costumes anyway? <laughs> Hey, small change. Tell me again, what's that stupid costume you're wearing? My giant outfit. <laughs> A shrimp like you? Sure, I'm the world's smallest giant. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's really dumb. Hey, now lay your eyes on these threads. I'm a clown! <laughs> <laughs> we know that. But where are you dressed at? <laughs> <laughs> hey, ole, ole, ole! Feast your eyes on the greatest toy door on Earth. We dig. You do? Yeah. You're the world's champ at throwing the bull. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we gonna have a great time tonight scaring old dudes. Hey, shake a leg. We gotta meet Devry at the graveyard. Sorry, Rudy. Hey, hey, hey. What's the deal here, anyway? Call it. You'll find out soon enough, Super Fats. Let's get out of here! I don't lie! I don't like this place! Well, if you're all too chicken... Chicken? Who's chicken? Who you call not, no, chicken? not me. I'm not chicken, man. What you got here? Chicken. I am! Now, you're gonna see something that'll knock your eyes out. You could have seen the look on your face when I popped out. Listen, Debbie, that's not cool to go around shocking people. <laughs> Fat Albert, how could anyone be so round and so square at the same time? I don't care. You shouldn't scare these dudes like that. What do you mean, scared? I wasn't scared. Yeah, I wasn't scared. I was! All you clowns were scared. I had you quacking in your boots. Not quacking, quaking. Quagging, quaking, and shaking, and that's no faking. Aw, oh, oh, man, I was scared. I was scared. I was scared. scared. Who, me? We be noble. Why was Mrs. Baked That's nothing to what me and Devery got planned for that old grouch later on tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really? 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 What's, what, what's what that? Tell me now. But first, we're gonna have some preliminaries before the main event. First, we're gonna scare old Searchlight Johnson at the movie house. Hey, guys, I don't think we should. Yeah, then we can scare old Mudfoot Brown. Yeah, yeah. Hey, right, right on. on. Yeah, that'll be cool, oh, man. And the climax of the Fright Night festivities will be to get you know who. <laughs> This one Halloween, weird old lady Bakewell is never gonna forget. Hey, dudes, 
Before you get too far gone, scaring old folks. Stop, yeah, I'm doing it, man. What's wrong with you? Don't waste yourself. <laughs> 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 Hi, Mom. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Konami's Castlevania The Adventure for Nintendo's Game Boy. In the maze of vampire scripts and unearthly evils, it is about to sink its fangs into you. <laughs> show prices change. Yeah, but the main thing is that we're really gonna suck it to old Searchlight Johnson. Yeah! Yeah! Valerie, Mama grounded you. You gotta go home. Well, look at here. The eyes, ears, nose, and throat of the world. You're gonna get in big trouble. Blah! Aren't you scared of creepy things? No, you don't bother me at all. Oh, get lost, Melba. Come on, gang. I'm warning you. Mom and Pop find out you're in big trouble. Hey, uh, she won't really tell on you, will she? No, I got her buffaloed. I don't want you kids messing around. Keep your feet off the seats, keep your lips zipped. Hey, follow me up to the balcony. We'll demo searchlights bulb for him. Dr. Nordenberger, hurry. We have to get past those creepy, icky space squids. Watch it, Dr. Nordenberger. The creepy, icky space squids are going to dime bomb us. Space squid's going to get me! Shut up. Yes, but there's a worse threat overhead. Yes, Dr. Nordenberger, it's Super Space Squid. And you too, wise guy. O-U-T, out, out. <laughs> Man, that was the funniest thing I ever saw. Not funny, Debris. You got us kicked out of the best part, too. I did not. It was that mean old Searchlight Johnson. Oh, dude, just like him, got no sense of humor. You don't have no sense of humor and no sense either. Ah, uh, quit your belly aching. The fun is only beginning. Follow me. Hey, all right. All right. All right. All right. Why don't we just do some more trick-or-treating without scaring the old folks? Aw, oh, hey, 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 don't be such a drill. Hey, man, listen, yeah, you're that's scared that's somebody, me. man. What's wrong? Uh, now that that's settled, Captain Plump Plump, can we get on with the business of the evening? Our next victim lives right over there. Hold it. We don't want to scare old Mudfoot. What did he ever do anyway? He got old, that's what. Come on, Rudy. Let's show these bush leaguers how to do a big league scare. I hear you. Let's go.
With all this racket going on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mudfoot, you know what we're here for? Lay some treats on us. You no. Know, when I was a kid, trick or treating was different. Talking about fun, we didn't have no signal lights. And I used to wear the darkest clothes I could find so nobody could see me. Yes, sir. Nothing like a challenge of crossing a dark, busy street. That don't sound like much fun to me. Won't catch me crossing no dark street. No. No, boots, hey, but That's asking for it. That's bad. Yeah, right. 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 Then there wasn't all this through for all about taking treats that was prepackaged. Yeah, I wish you could have seen the good slop I had. You're a taste lint covered licorice, taffy, apple, popcorn, peanut, orange, donut, peppermint, divinity, fudge, all globbed together in one big gritty gooey wad. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Not like all this sissy sanitary pre wrap goody two shoe stuff you get today. Courts needs to get sick and dogs and spend two, three days in bed, but it's worth it. Hey, 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 I don't care what you say, I ain't gonna eat nothing but wrapped up goodies. Yeah, me neither. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Well, I gotta see my TV shows now. You better get going with your trick and treating. Uh, okay, okay, all right, my pussy. Come on, I'll see you. All right. See Good old my friend. He's a cool old dude, ain't he? Yeah, yeah sure. Hey, man, he's real cool. You dudes are T U M dumb. What are you talking mm. about? That old dude got away without giving nobody nothing. Debbie. Oh. You better come home right now, or you're really gonna get in trouble. Call it. Call it. You hear me, huh? The whole world can hear you, Diesel Mouth. Why do you call me Diesel Mouth? Because your yap is so big, you could drive a truck through it. It's getting late. We all better go home. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. 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 it's time to go. Yeah. All right, it's all right with me. We sure didn't do too good with the tricks or treats. Hold it. Hold everything. We are forgetting the most, the baddest, the scariest part of the whole night. Who could forget her? Put me down. I don't mean her. I mean her. with mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Big trouble. Huh. Now hear this, shortbread. I'm not going home here. Me and my pals got to go up to that creepy old house and scare old lady Bakewell. Right, dudes? Uh, 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 I don't know. No, really. Uh, uh, I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. I got something to say. You've been talking mighty big and bold all night about what us dudes should do. Now, just for a change, let's see you do something really heavy on your own. Uh, who? who? Uh, me? Uh... Yeah, Devery. Uh, are you <laughs> chicken? You jiving? My brother Devery's no chicken. He's a lame duck with no pluck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Big Mouth, I got a deal for you. I'll go home right now. Good. If you go trick or treating up there to creepy old lady Bakewell's house. <laughs> See? I could have told you. Huh? <gasps> hey, Russell! She got him. These messages will be right back. The kids of Elm Street don't know it yet, but something is coming to get them. Nightmare for 
on Elm Street. No! No! She's the only one who can stop it. If she fails, no one will survive. Help me, please! Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street, rated R. Now playing at a flagship theater near you. What's the delay? Russell and Melva been in there 1,100 million years. Even longer than that. It's nearly 15 minutes. Shh. You gotta do something, Fat Albert. You hear? That's my little sister in there. And my little brother. I'll see you dudes later. Where are you going? Let go, man. I'm gonna get the SWAT squad. I'll give you a five-knuckle SWAT. Easy, dudes. Easy. Keep cool. Follow me. I got a plan. Come on. That's it. Good night. Okay, Derry, take a run. We'll flip you up through the window. Hmm, I don't know. I, I got a Charlie horse. Or, or maybe a bad ankle. Yeah, that's it. Or, or maybe a... Never mind. I'll go. Whoa! Uh-oh. Ah! Get me down! Help! Shut up! You be all righty. Hey, hey, hey. I'm okay. You, you got you to gotta get my little sister out of there right now. And what about my poor brother Russell who's trapped in a room full of millions of alligators and snakes and spiders, a giant space squid, and... Okay, okay. I hear what you say. I'm going up there and ring that doorbell. No, no. That'd give him a chance to hide the evidence. We, we got to rush the door right now. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. Won't you join us? was to have some visitors for a change. I haven't had much company since the mister passed on. Do try some of these. Hey, hey, hey. This is really okay. Go to hurry back. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. You've been so nice to us dudes that we're going to come back Saturday and do your yard. Yeah. And we're going to do it absolutely free for nothing. See you. Bye-bye. Hey, yeah, bye. 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 Yeah, yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Okay. Bye, bye. Yeah, that was Miss hey. Blackwell. Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, we're close. Uh -huh. You said it, man. Right on. Old folks are great if you give them half a chance, huh? It's like I always say, old people are a-okay. Ah! Melba, you okay? That old lady didn't hurt you, did she? Tell me you're okay. I'll tell you. Let me down, you sap. Hey, Devery, where were you? You missed a great feast. Huh? Yeah, we had cookies, we had soda pop, and we had marshmallows. Oh, yeah, candy! And all kinds of good stuff! What? That mean old lady! Mean old lady nothing. She's the greatest. Yeah, you had her all wrong, Devery. Too bad you missed the big feed. Come on, Russell. We better split for home. Hey, hey all right, just my dad is on the way home. Heavy! Hey, all right. What? What? I? I? That's 
That's no fair. I didn't get what's coming to me. When am I gonna get mine? You're gonna get yours right now. <gasps> Dad! But Dad, let me explain. I'm innocent. It wasn't my fault. Honest, I was framed! I'm innocent. No class. Hey! hey. 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 Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. What a meal, what a meal, a whole bowl of cereal. What a meal, what a meal, a whole bowl of cereal. Someone asks me what I like to eat I tell them what makes my dinner time complete I stop eating all of the food It's not uncivilized, it's not crude Who needs the four food groups when you out my beautiful weed. 
Nothing like giving the house a good dusting. How's the gardening coming, dear? The gardening's fine, but I'm not. Look, there's our son with pebbles again. I've told him to stay away from those oddball Flintstones. Thanks for helping me carry my books home, Freaky. That's what friends are for, Peb. Gee, you must have a lot of homework tonight. Hey, look, your father's waving at us. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Frankenstone. Gee, I can't quite hear what he's saying. Consider yourself lucky. Oh, that boy makes me really mad. I'm going to bring him home. Frank Frankenstone. Don't be such an old stick in the blood. But idiot. No buts, Frank. Now please bring in the garbage. Oh. One little, two little, three little potions, four little, five little, ah, 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 juice! Uh oh, I think I did a bad thing. <laughs> Well, I guess it's back to the drawing board, gang. Did you see that? It's a hate potion, and I love it. Now all my problems with Freaky and Pebbles are solved. Mm, great popcorn, Peb. Thanks. I made it myself. And this is a super show. You sure know how to pick them. Yeah, on second thought, this popcorn is a pit! And you have rotten taste in TV shows! Says you, sandal shoes! Love it or leave it! Oh, yeah? Yeah! Oh, wonderful, wonderful! I haven't been this happy since my last funeral. <laughs> You can just take your test and cram for it. I'm leaving. Good riddance. My father was right. You are a creep off the old block. Oh, boy, it worked like a charm. Now to get rid of the evidence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Open wide, Rock Shore. We have to get this potion powder back. Oh, am I mad? Knock off that singing! And get away from my yard! When Ed first comes, I'm gonna be first on, see? Oh, no, I'm first! You're both wrong, turkeys. This lady's numero uno. Yes, hey, oh, yes! Yeah. What's so funny, Mac? Get him! Yeah! Uh-oh! It's every beast for himself! What's all the commotion outside, dear? A weirdo neighbor, Frank Frankenstone, up to no good as usual. Now, oh, now, Fred. There's good in everybody. You just look for it. But keep your hands off this cake, Chubbo. You'll need it like a hole in the head. Ah, eh, Wilma, you're so beautiful when you're angry. In fact, the world is beautiful. Hey, ton of fun. Just where do you think you're going? To bring this cake to the sweetest, dearest guy in the whole world, my pal, Frank Frankenstone. That creepo! Why, it's Mr. Flintstone. Please come in. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my favorite family. <laughs> and my favorite pet. <sighs> oh, me. Okay, Flintstone, what do you want? I want only to give my pal Frank this homemade cake. 
Why, thank you. I'll get some plates. Oh, it's so good to see you two getting along for a change. Speaking of getting along, why don't you get along home, Flintstone, before I get mad? <laughs> hey, let go. Open up, Rockjaw. Open up. Oh, boy, oh, boy. What a kitty you are, Frankie. What a great sense of humor. Flintstone, I'm getting very tired of... Tired? Hey, no problem. Old Freddy Boy here will help you relax, pal. First, we're going to put them aside to take away the tension. <laughs> See? You're feeling better already. Oh, yeah! You're making me mad! Mad, 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 mad! <laughs> Frank, you're such a wild and crazy guy. I'd love to stay and play, but you gotta run. Good, buddy. Oh, it's you again. Then I'm taking the long way to school. Good. I hope you get lost. Frank, did you see Freaky and Pebbles fighting? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's not like them. Now, maybe Wilma knows what's wrong. Hello, Wilma. I... She told me to buzz off. Well, I guess that means we won't be seeing any more of the Flintstone. Hmm. Da, 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 yeah, but ja ba you. Good morning to you. What are you doing here? This is my day off, and I couldn't think of a better way to spend it than with you, old buddy. Oh, no, you don't. So, Frankie, old pal, where do we go first? You're going home, and fast! All right, forward! That's for speeding. That's for reckless driving, and that's for just plain ugliness. Eh, sorry, officer, but you just can't give my best friend a ticket. Oh, I can't, huh? Well, we'll just see about that. I sure told him, huh, Frank? Fred, would you do me a favor? Anything, old pal? Just ask. Would you mind checking the back tires? Why, certainly, good buddy. Oh, oh, oh. So long, good buddy! Oh. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. That Frank has the greatest sense of humor. Always kidding around. Oh, I'm home, Hidia. Oh, what a surprise. Just in time for lunch. And guess who the cook is? Yeah, but zappa you. Steak and potatoes for you. Yay! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Boy, that husband of yours always joking around. <laughs> yes. Isn't he a scream? <laughs> Oh, Atrocia, quick! Daddy needs a great big favor. From little bitty me? Right! Remember your magic potion that made the lovebirds fight? Uh-huh. Well, I need something that works just the opposite. Sure, Daddy. Oh, what a good girl. I can't imagine who she takes after. But, Daddy... What, dear, what, 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 what? I could think better if I had a big penicillin pizza. Right, right. There you go. And some goulet to wash it down. Oh, goulet, right. <laughs> there you go. And sludge ripple ice cream for dessert. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> your ice cream. <laughs> and your potion. Oh, rock jaw! <laughs> Catch! <laughs> 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 
It's so sweet of you to wash all our dishes, Mr. Flintstone. How'd the dust go, Pep? Great! Come on over and celebrate. <sighs> ah, there you are. Oh, no. From now on, wash your own dishes, weirdo! Same to you, Rockhead! Oh, boy, what a relief to have things back to normal again. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> These messages will be right back. The castle of the chicken McNuggets. What are you making? Sauce. We're using my mummy's recipe. Mummy? Uh oh. This better be good. It'll be great. Hmm, does your daddy have a recipe? <laughs> now you can get McDonald's Happy Meal Pails for Halloween. There's a pumpkin pail, Boo. a witch, Boo. and a ghost Boo. that glows in the dark. You can get a different one each week until Halloween. Ah! Time to go down to the basement for some more hauntingly delicious Count Chocula cereal. Don't look in the basement. <laughs> Those eyes are looking at me. Hmm, think I'll get some fruity Frankenberry from the cupboard. Don't look in the cupboard. Oh, oh, those eyes, they move. Now the spooky delicious part of your complete breakfast is even spookier. <laughs> Now Chocula's eyes really move. So did Frankenberry's. He is looking at you, kids. <laughs> should have worn a costume. Yo, Bo Peep, what you got in your bag? Introducing Roy Rogers' Big Chicken Deal. Two plump and juicy pieces of fried chicken, hot crisp fries, and a fresh baked biscuit. Roy Rogers' Big Chicken Deal, just a dollar ninety-nine. Mmm. Don't you even think about it. There's a smile in every Hershey bar. Unhappy birthday to you. Unhappy birthday to you. Unhappy birthday, dear Freaky. Unhappy birthday to you. Down, Rockjaw! Mmm, delicious, idiot. What kind is it? I thought I'd try something different this year, Frank. It's chocolate mousse. Yum! I love chocolate mousse. <clears throat> but chocolate mousse doesn't always agree with me. <laughs> Atrocia, dear. Are you blowing up the party balloons? I sure am, Mother. Oh, <laughs> it's perfect. I couldn't have done better myself. Hey, everybody. I'm home. Well, there's the birthday boy now. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Freaky, are you feeling all right? Your cheeks are so rosy. I'm fine, Mom. I just ran home from the Flintstones. The Flintstones? I thought I told you to stay away from those strangers. They're a bad influence. Frank Frankenstone, don't be such an old stick in the blood. Sure, the Flintstones are different, but that doesn't mean we can't be friends. Hey, I'm glad you both feel that way, because I've invited Pebbles to my party. What? Oh, no, you don't, Freaky. This time, I'm putting my foot down. I'll save you, Daddy. Mr. Flintstone, 
I came from my lawnmower, Mrs. Frankenstone. Wilma says your husband borrowed it. Oh, yes. Frank's mowing the carpet. Come in, come in. Mowing the carpet? Yes, we're getting ready for Freaky's big birthday party. I can't believe how quickly he's growing up. Living here would age anybody fast. Dear, Fred Flintstone's here. Well, if it isn't the next door nitwit, what do you want? First, I want some respect. And second, I want my lawnmower. Half of that you got. Here. Oof. I just finished. Frank. Oh, thank you. You are almost welcome. Oof. Oh, look, Mr. Flintstone. You're getting a hug from our rug. <laughs> What did I tell you, idiot? Those Flintstones are totally wacko. Which reminds me... Freaky! Yeah, Dad? Did you want to invite Pebbles Flintstone to your party yet? Um, well, uh... Just as I thought. Then go to it right now. But, Dad... Freaky! Hey, I'm going, I'm going! Gosh, she doesn't have to get so steamed up about it. Hi, Freaky. My dad says you can't come to my birthday party this afternoon. Oh, Freaky, why not? Because he thinks your family is, well, strange. Oh. But I just had an idea that might work, Peb. We'll disguise you to look like one of my distant cousins. Then later, when we remove our disguise, my dad will realize what nice people you Flintstones really are. Great idea. See you in an hour. Wow, Freaky. You're the smartest big brother in the whole world. Dad'll blow his top if he finds out. Now promise you'll keep this a secret. Okay, okay. We won't say another word, will we, gang? And we have to get ready to help Freaky's plan work, right? Boy, I don't believe this. Look at all the weirdos going in there. Fred Flintstone, you ought to be ashamed of yourself spying on people like that. People? Wilma, those ding-dongs are from another planet. Or worse. Aren't my words, Wilma. Those Frankenstones are a menace to the neighborhood. Oh, my name's not... Pebbles Flintstone! It's Pebbles! She's going to the Frankenstone party! Wilma, she's not safe with those creeps. I'm gonna get her. Pebbles, are you ready yet? Yeah. How do I look? Just like one of the family. Come on, let's join the party. Wait, Freaky, are you sure we're not going to get in trouble for this? Hey, trust me, Pebbles. My dad will never know until it's too late. This should have been a surprise party, because it sure is going to be full of surprises. <laughs> Great party, huh, Pebbles? It's very, uh, unique. Wow, wow. Now, here's the kind of young lady I like to see my son associate with. Not like that Flintstone girl next door. Boy, oh boy, if I've told Pebbles once, I've told her a thousand times not to come over here. Hey, Pebbles? I know you're in there. Pebbles? You who? No! Oh, um, Mr. Flintstone, what can I do for you? You and your creepy friend can tell me where Pebbles is. Well, uh... I think it's great that you could come to the party, uh, uh, Mr. Flintstone. You keep away from me, weirdo. But, but, sir, it's a perfect opportunity for you to get to know Freaky and his family better. They're really very nice. Hey, right. And you're just in time for all the goodies. 
We're having upside down cake. Mmm. Oh, uh, f forget the cake, Freaky. Oh, you don't want any cake? <laughs> well then, at least have some ice cream. Yay! <laughs> Guess your father just doesn't have a sweet tooth. Or a strong stomach. All right, everyone. It's time to do the boogaloo. Hit it, boys. Wow, your dad can really dance, Freaky. Yeah. He's a regular John Revolta. Frank, you'd better slow down. Remember your oil pressure. Don't worry, my dear. I just had a tune-up. Oh, that girl with Freaky is my kind of girl. Maybe there's hope for Freaky yet. The plan's working. Daddy likes pebbles. And I bet he'll like her even better when he sees what a great dancer she is. Go, Freaky, go! Show him some super fast footwork. Yeah. Ricky, wait! Slow down! I can't! Uh oh! I think I did a bad thing. Apples, Flintstone, Ricky! Temper, Frank, temper. Don't temper me, idiot. I'm mad, mad, mad. Oh, dear. I knew it. His circuits have scrambled. Gosh, Freaky, he looks like a TV set on the fritz. Oh, great. And he's the only TV repairman in town. Wait a sec. Our TV does this sometimes. I think I know how to fix him. How? First, hold him still. I'll try. There! Fixed! Oh. Oh. Thank goodness you're all right. Yeah. Pebbles, you saved my circuit. Oh, maybe I have been wrong about you, Flintstone. Hold it! Then again, maybe I haven't. Keep away from my daughter, you creep! Come on, Pebbles, I'm rescuing you from all these weirdos. But, but, Dad, one of the weirdos was me. See? Huh? Just because these people look and act a little different from us doesn't mean we can't all be friends. Right. So why don't you come join the party? Him? Are you crazy? Shh. Uh -huh. We'd love to have you, Mr. Flintstone. Well, I, uh... Aw, oh, come on, Mr. Flintstone. We're just getting ready to play pin the tail on the monster. Daddy, wait! You see what I mean, Hidia? Those Flintstones are a bunch of yo-yos. Ahem? Well, if my son has to associate with yo-yos, at least he picked the best yo-yo in the bunch. Stay tuned. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday morning cartoon Max Out is...
Every 400 years, a baby werewolf is born into the Fangsworth family. And so, when the moon shined on little Sherman Fangsworth, he changed into Fangface. <coughs> the werewolf. Only the sun can change him back to normal. And so, little Fangs grew up and teamed up with three daring teenagers, Kim, Biff, and Pugsy. And together, they find danger, excitement, and adventure. Save the day! Who can wrong the rights? Then right the wrongs. None other than Fang Face! Ooh, ooh. At long last, I have discovered the ancient tablet of Morozuma. Congratulations, Dr. Melendez. You've been searching for it for years. Yes, and the tablet reveals the exact location of the priceless Molazuma treasure. But the curse? What about the curse of the mummy of Molazuma? What? Who is in here? We have the tablet, Mr. Gruder. Quick, back to our headquarters before the sleep smoke wears off and they awaken. We're almost over Dr. Melendez's exploration base on Pelagroso Island. Yeah! I heard all about the curse of the mummy of Molazuma and how he comes to life, rises from the sea, and goes berserk any time anyone gets near his sunken treasure. Eh, mummy shrummy. No mummy is gonna scare me. Besides, Dr. Melendez is a friend, and when a friend asks for help to locate a stolen tablet... And stop the crooks that stole it from getting the treasure first. His friends gotta help him. Ooh, ooh, and I got just the thing to find it with. What's that? Radar. It helps you find things. It can tell you when something's getting near our plane, like a mountain, or a seagull, or a mosquito, or a gnat, or a... Eh, shut up. Ooh, ooh. Boing, boing. Boing, boing, boing. Radar contact. Boing, boing. Ooh, ooh. Look, we're being followed. It's them. They have come to help Dr. Melendez. We must stop them. How are we gonna stop those crazy creeps? Yeah, Pug, ho! Ho, 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 ho! The moon came out and it's changing fangs into fang face! <laughs> Those crazy creeps are no match for Fang Face! Not me, you creep! Mm, mm, I did it again! I'm sorry, Pug! I'll make it up to you! I'll get them other creeps! What's that? I don't know, but we've got to get rid of it. <laughs> this time, I'll fix him for sure. Till we ditch those guys. And here's our chance. They'll never find us in this cloud cover.
Welcome to Peligroso Island. This is Mr. Luis, who is in charge of Mexico's national treasures. He's here to assist us in finding the treasure of Montezuma. The ancient sheep carrying it was sunk in a storm about 2,000 years ago, along with sacred statues and a mummy of Montezuma. But what of the curse of Montezuma? <coughs> yeah, is it for real? <coughs> we don't know. But many old people who live here claim that the last time anyone approached the treasure, the mummy rose to the surface and almost destroyed the entire island. The Montezuma tablet was stolen by Mr. Gruller, the notorious collector of antique treasures. And it's up to us to prevent him from getting the treasure. And from unleashing the mummy. Right. We'll dive in the treasure area first thing in the morning and set a trap for Gruller and his men. Fools, you let those meddling kids arrive safely. But this time I have a plan to take care of them for good. It's a sack, Fang Face. We got a busy day tomorrow. Soon as I wash up, pugs! <laughs> <laughs> Those kids are inside. Release the contents of the basket. That snake will take care of them. I'll stuff you in that bottle of sun slick hair oil. So yeah. help! Abandoned ship! There's a sea serpent after me! Look at this picture of the moon! Where's pugs? Never mind pugs, get that snake! Gotcha! Fang face, he's got you! Ooh, ooh, you're right! Me! <laughs> Good work, Fangface. That'll hold that snake until we can get it to a zoo. Nothing to it. We're almost over the treasure site. Is everybody ready? Ready and rarin'. Yeah, yeah, ready. And just to cover all the bases, Fangface and me have our own trap. You mean that cage? Exactly. We lure those crooks into it and trap them inside. Ah, ooh, you're a genius, pug. Ah, gosh, you know everything better than anyone knows anything. Ah, nobody knows anything. Ah, much as you know everything because you know everything. Ah, that sounds like something that... Ah, eh, shut up. One of these days. Ah, we should be over the treasure now. But we believe the underwater cave that hides the treasure is blocked off by a sunken ship. That means we'll have to go into the ship in order to find the cave entrance. Right. Okay, everybody. Let's go. Okay, guys, we have to check all the portholes facing the cliff.
I did. Ooh, ooh. You look cute with that big necklace of the sun. 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 Yikes. Tang Face saw my sun jewel and is changing back to fangs. Huh? How'd I get down here? I don't remember going swimming. Hey, why are we swimming, huh? Why? Why? Yeah, shut up. We got creeps to catch. And look, there's the mummy's case. Forget the mummy. We got the treasure. So let's hide and wait for Grula. Get them. We don't have to wait. They're here. No fair. We weren't ready. Dispose of them. Get us out of here, fangs. Ooh, ooh. That looks like a safe place. See, Pug, see? They won't get us in here, and you didn't think I was smart. <laughs> I know you ain't smart. Instead of getting us out of here, you locked us inside our own trap. Trap? How am I supposed to know this is a trap? I don't even know what I'm doing down here. Forget them. They'll never get out of that cage. The mummy of Malazuma. Remember? The mummy. I told you. He's rising from the sea and going berserk. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Ever hear of a gift certificate that turns into a soft drink? Oh, it can happen this Halloween. Wow. When you give out McDonald's Halloween gift certificates, kids take them to McDonald's and, and they get a McDonald's soft drink. Oh, a book of 20 Halloween gift certificates costs only a dollar. And can turn into 20 regular soft drinks. It must be the magic of Halloween. Nobody can do McDonald's can. N nobody. Halloween Toys R Us doesn't miss a trick, and the price is a retreat. We've got costumes for all Toys R Us kids, even grown-ups. And loads of candy, makeup, masks, and more. Toys R Us will make your Halloween supernatural. <laughs> Tales of horror that will give you the creeps. This is going to be extremely painful, Mr. Verrill. Oh. <laughs> the most fun you'll ever have being scared. Creep Show, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Everyone wants to zap gold cake with vanilla frosting, devil's food with chocolate, raspberry with coconut, all with cream centers. Please one singer to zap. Right now, in specially marked bonus packs, you'll find a pumpkin decorating kit and two extra zingers. Trick or treat! One trick and two treats from Dolly Madison. The Halloween experts at Magic Manor have everything you'll need this year, including actual character masks from famous motion pictures. And they can show you the proper application of makeup to impress that special someone. Magic Manor's professional hand-painted custom masks start as low as $2.50. This Halloween, remember Magic Manor. Wigs, masks, makeup, costumes, shockingly authentic. Magic Manor, East Wind Mall. He's ripped open the whole cage. Come on, now's our chance to get out. You don't have to ask twice. Doctor.
Dr. Melendez said the only way to stop the curse and return the mummy to the sea is to replace the treasure. Which means we've got to find where Grueler and his men are hiding it. <laughs> Listen, it's him. Tall, wet, and bandaged. There's no time to lose, gang. We'll use the speedboat and search the whole island. But first, we'll need Fangface. Fangface? I don't know any Fangface. Who's Fangface? Never mind. Just look at this picture of the moon. <laughs> Who wears pugs? Where is he? Ah, uh -uh, Fangface, that's a no-no. Come on, we'll search the island by sea while Fangface searches by air. Yeah, I'll search by air. <laughs> by what? <laughs> Why do I gotta be up here? Why me? Why? I don't even have wings. Because you're the only one with super werewolf eyesight. So keep your eyes open. Sure, punk. Sure. Just let me focus my eyes. Ooh, ooh. What have we here? I see him. I see him. A big yacht. Brain? Why did you have to make a sudden stop? I mean, suddenly you stopped, and all of a sudden you stopped. Suddenly, <laughs> your wife will sudden, huh? 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 Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, guys. Now let's get aboard that yacht. A load of that. The treasure of Morozuma is aboard and secure, Mr. Gruder. Excellent. Prepare to weigh anchor and leave this accursed place. Willikers, they're getting set to leave. Which means we better split up and make a really fast search. Shh. Shh. Sure, pugs. Shh. Face sees himself in this mirror, he'll go bananas and ruin everything. Hey, pugs! How come you're standing in front of that mirror, huh? How come? Uh, what mirror? That mirror! <laughs> <laughs> No, no! Look, Fang Face, we found the treasure. Biff, Kim, we got the treasure. Let's get out of here! Stop them! Yikes! Mommy dead ahead! <laughs> He's after the treasure. Fangface, toss him the treasure! Yeah, sure, Pug, sure! <laughs> Get the treasure into our speedboat. We must get away. Hey, Gruler's getting away. After him. Uh, Pugs. Quit disrupting me, will you? Can't you see I'm busy navigating this ship? Uh, uh Pugs. Will you quit disrupting me before I... Yeah. I tried to tell him. 
Take care of. Them. Come on, Fang Face. I'll just relieve you guys of the treasure. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> well, that wraps this adventure up. <laughs> you mean all wrapped up, except for all wrapped up. <laughs> Quick, Fang Face, give the mummy his treasure, and this time, don't goof. Right. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. You're welcome. <laughs> it was nothing. <laughs> Grueler and his men are in jail, Dr. Melendez. And the mummy's back where he belongs. And here's your stolen Malazuma tablet. I don't know how to thank you, kids. Don't thank us. Just see that nobody ever abdicates with that tablet again. I got a tummy full of mummy. <laughs> this is gonna be terrific. <laughs> Oh, the wise guy, eh? What's this, mummy? Uh, that's a picture of the sun. Hey, what happened? Why am I all wrapped up, huh? Hey, what, what, what happened? What, what's going on? What? What? If we told you, you wouldn't believe it anyway. Tell me. I'll believe you. I'll believe every single word. I promise. Okay. You saved the whole island from the mummy of Molazuma. You flipped. I don't believe a word. Not a single word, you hear? Not a word, not a syllable. Today's adventure begins here at Breakheart Reserve. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup with Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. Once upon a time, in a large forest, there lived a woodchopper, his wife and their two children, Hansel and Gretel. It was a beautiful forest full of trees, flowers, butterflies, and streams. Matter of fact, there was just one thing missing. Food! I must have food! Food? Food isn't everything, dear. No, but it's something. But we have the trees, the flowers, the butterflies, the streams. What more could a body want? A square meal, that's what. Okay, spoil sport. Now, you might think that in a forest as big as this one, the woodchopper would be able to bring back some game for the table. But a curious thing happened to him when he went out. He just couldn't pass a tree without chopping it down. Well, I mean, after all, a woodchopper is to chop wood. So, each night, the woodchopper would come home with lots of logs, but no food. And what good are logs? You can't eat them. Who says? Mmm, yummy. Anyone for roast leg of log? I think we better split and get some food, Hansel. Yeah, 
It looks like Mom's a little kooky. Kooky? Oh, I wish I had a kooky. So, taking a few precious grains of parched corn, the children set out for the forest. Hours later, Gretel began to worry. When we found food, how do we find our way back? Easy. Remember those grains of parched corn? Well, I've been leaving them as a trail so we can find our way home. Some neat plan, eh? That plan is for the birds. And so it was. The birds had eaten all the corn. Hopelessly lost, the children wandered about until Hansel suddenly bumped into something. Something that wasn't a tree. Watch your step, stupid. You bumped right into that gingerbread house. Gingerbread house? Oh, isn't it cunning? Cunning? It looks good enough to eat. Have a piece of shutter. I'm more of a shingle and doorman myself. And in a few minutes, Hansel and Gretel had eaten a big hole in the little house. Then, suddenly... Nibble, nibble like a mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? Huh, there's always a catch. You're a wicked witch, aren't you? Well, yes. And you got all kinds of magic powers, true? Well, no. You can't breathe fire and smoke? <coughs> nope. I just get dizzy. You can't summon up demons? I don't know. Hey, you demons! You got no magic powers at all? Well, there is one thing I'm pretty good at. Turning children into aardvarks. Yeah, at that you're pretty good. But I don't really care much for aardvarks. Then why do you keep changing children into them? Because I care even less for children. Besides, I have the witch's tradition to uphold. Isn't there something you'd rather do? Oh, sure. I'd like to know how to ride a broomstick. Vroom, boy. But what's the use? I'll never get off the ground. If I show you how to ride a broomstick, will you change Hansel back again? Of course, of course. But you aren't even a witch. Oh, come now. There's a little bit of the witch in all of us girls. Give me the broom. Now, you take this broom. Yeah, yeah. And you twirl it all around. Yeah, yeah. Now you put it on the ground. Oh, yeah. And you sit right down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you tell that broom. Ba -ba boom, boom, boom. Fly around the room. Da -da 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 -da. And sure enough. Gretel began to fly. Now me, now me! But unfortunately, the witch hadn't asked how to turn the broom off. So, once she started it, she had to keep on going. And in a little while, she was in orbit around the Earth, where she remained to this day. But she did keep her word, for as soon as she had gone, Hansel turned back into himself. And so did Oddbox all over the world. In fact, <laughs> Oddbox might have become extinct if it weren't for the fact that some Oddbox decided that they'd be happier <laughs> remaining Oddbox. At any rate, Hansel and Gretel packed up the rest of the witch's house and started off. Of course, since they were in a magic forest, they soon came upon a huge talking duck. Oh, duck, uh, would you tell us the way back to our cottage? Je ne comprends pas. Yes, unfortunately, this was a French talking duck. But he indicated that the children were to get on his back. And down the river they went. After a long while, the duck said, Et voilà, nous avons arrivé. <laughs> Which is uh, French for end of the line. Oh, joy! Home again! For there, sitting on a log, was their father. Not with his axe, but with a musket. Father, why aren't you chopping down trees? Well, Gretel, I finally decided that all that glitters is not trees. You can't buy happiness with trees. Besides, I've chopped them all down. Now it's hunting. <coughs> hunting is the only thing. So, from that day on, Hansel and Gretel had plenty of food, and their mother never went hungry again. You know, sometimes I wish he'd stuck to his wood chopping. <laughs> There's a lot more of me coming up, so don't touch that dial, man.
please take a seat. Yeah, we're dying to meet ya. Go with the spirit and chill in the cheer it. Sharks, jellyfish, riptides, whoa! Primo conditions, little dude. Let's hit the waves. All right, I'm finally gonna learn how to surf, man. Whoa, you just scored your first lesson, little dude. It's called getting trashed. It's to be avoided, right? Rule number uno! You gotta make friends with the waves! Not to mention the locals. Hey, Jaws, dude! Whoa, that dude's really working the waves. He's a natural. Gnarly looking, but a natural. I haven't seen surfing like that in years. That dude's my best buddy, man. He was teaching me how to surf. I got trashed. Major trashed. Hey, man, I was just telling this human dweeb about my first surfing lesson. Whoa, little dude, this is no ordinary human dweeb. It's Kahuna Bob, only the most righteous surfer did in the history of water. Well, uh, that was a few years back. I'm chilling out in retirement now. This dweeb is getting on my nerves. But hey, you've got a few righteous moves yourself, dude. I mean, you've even got a built-in wetsuit. With a little help from me and some serious practice sessions, who knows? You could be the next kahuna. Whoa! Way awesome! No way, Awesome. You're supposed to be teaching me how to surf, man. Sorry, little dude, but no way I'm gonna pass up pointers from the Kahuna himself. But you promised, man. Get moving, dude. You're gonna miss that gnarly set. What a day, man. First I get trashed by a wave, then I get trashed by my best friend. today. I thought so. You left it in your locker again. <sighs> Frank and Tyke, you're late. And you're ugly, man. So we're all agreed. Knowing a second language is definitely hip. Which brings us to the obvious next question. Can anybody here speak another language? Hey, sure, teach. I speak a little Transylvanian. I want to bite your neck. That's understandable, Vinny. Yes, Reggie. Uh, well, I speak fluent werewolf. Uh, loosely translated, that means there's a full moon tonight. I can speak ancient Egyptian. Of course, it's in hieroglyphics. This means I like a tomb with a view. In Schneiderese, that means I think I've got my work cut out for me. Ah, Frankentike. I see you've condescended to join us. How thoughtful. But where's our favorite swamp creature, Gil? Hey, don't ask me, man. I'm not that webhead keeper. Ooh. I guess that's a sore subject. Well, maybe you'll like our next subject, Spanish. To say good morning, turn to the amigo next to you and say, Buenos dias. I don't have an amigo, man. How do you say bogus in Spanish? Hey, Sal, what's cooking? Today I made lots of finger food. We got finger sandwiches, we got sticky fingers, and for dessert we got some nice fresh lady fingers. Ooh, yum, lady fingers. I'll take a handful. There you go, Cleo. Bony appetit. Oh, and don't forget, tomorrow we got the elbow macaroni. Mwah! <laughs>
Another helping, please. Now that's one sad little monster. Poor Frank and Tyke is just lost without Gil. Yes, it must be tough losing your best friend, huh, Vin? Hey, not to mention losing your only friend. Definitely not cool, Reg. Well, I'm gonna ask him to join us. Hey, Frank and Tyke, wanna sit with us? You're looking a little down in the dumps. Oh, yeah? Well, you look a lot like a dump yourself, bandage brain. Get lost. Oh, last time I tried to be nice to that anvil head. And so he set out in the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria on his daring voyage of discovery. Well, well, Mr. Waterman. Do you realize Columbus set sail without you? Hey, tell that Columbus dude I'm way sorry, but I was getting the lowdown on some totally righteous surfing moves. Yeah, well, if you keep this up, your grades are going to make some righteous moves, too. Like, straight down. Like, so what? I was getting tips from the Major Kahuna himself. Kahuna Bob. Uh-huh. Well, take a tip from Kahuna Schneider. Surf on your own time. During school hours, you're mine. Hey, I missed you at lunch, man. Here, I saved you a half a finger sandwich. Thanks, little dude. Kahuna Bob says I gotta keep up my strength. Kahuna Bob says, pardon me while I barf, man. Hello, Mrs. Waterman. This is Max Schneider, your son Gil's teacher. I... Wally and I can't come to the phone right now. We're on our annual migration to the Black Lagoon. But if you'll leave a message... I'll be lucky if I leave this booth. We'll call you when we get back. Have a moist day. So much for help from the home front. Guess I'll have to straighten Gil out myself, if he ever shows up. Sorry about the shower, dudes. <laughs> Gil, say hello to Sam and Dave, the Kiwi Cola reps. They're sponsoring the surf championship this weekend. Hey, rep dudes. Hey, man, the Kahuna says you're his pick to win. Whoa! Do you really think I'm ready, Kahuna? Does a surfer wear jams? Now smile, dude. Frankentike? Earth to Frankentike. That was the final bell. You don't have to stay after school. You didn't do anything wrong today. <sighs> yeah, I miss Gil, too. You know, if he wants to be friends with that geeky human surfer instead of me, then forget him, man. Don't worry, Frankentike. This kahuna business is just a passing phase. Gil will be back before you know it. Hey, you were right, man. Hey, dudes, like what's hops? Gil, this is getting out of hand. If you're gonna show up this late, why show up at all? Exacto mundo, teacher dude. I just popped in to tell you, I've been wasting too much wave time on this school gig. What do you mean, man? I mean, from now on, the Gil man is Splitsville, out of here city, Dr. Gone. Uh, in boring old English, if you don't mind, Gil. 
the kahuna says I've got tomorrow's kiwi cola syrup contest like in the bagola. Then I'm turning pro. So later, school dudes, I quit. Here's your history test, Vinny. C minus. George Washington crossed the Delaware by boat. He didn't fly. No wings? I thought he was in a hurry. <laughs> Frank and Tyke, you get an F plus. The construction of your sentences was dismal. However, the construction of your paper airplane shows definite improvement. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I did better than Gil. I mean, I may be failing history, but Gil is history. <laughs> I miss my friend, man. <laughs> I'm feeling poorly myself. Gil was such a gentlemanly creature. Came from good southern swamp stock, he did. I can't stand it. Gil's more invisible around here than I am. What are you, a bunch of crybabies? We've still got a shot at getting Gil back. What do you mean by that, Schneider? <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful day for the beach. the beach, man. That's where we'll find Gil and that human surfer dweeb. Good. I'll get to show off my itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny shroud bikini. Whoa, I can't believe anyone would be caught dead in that. Then again, you're already dead. Whoa, can't you read, dude? There's no place to park. Is there a problem? Thank you. I don't know what that boy was talking about. There's plenty of room to park. Who cares? It's a horrible day for the beach. Hey, tell me about it. This sun's killing me. Not to mention the place is crawling with humans. They won't bite, JP. Now let's get changed and hit the beach. Yeah! yeah! Hey, look, Gil's gonna shoot the pier. Gil, stop hot dogging for these ho dads and keep away from that pier. Way to go! Yo, look at Gil go. Yes, he is quite adept at maximizing forward wave thrust while mounted on floating fiberglass. He's good, darling, but he's no Frankie Avalon. Hey, class dudes and dudettes, you come to watch me, like, work out for the championship? No, man, we came to... Gil! Man, that was a stupid, dangerous stunt to pull. Haven't you learned anything? Jeez, like, sorry, Kahuna dude, just trying to have some fun. The dude just doesn't listen. You must be the Kahuna Bob I've heard so much about. I'm Max Schneider, Gil's teacher, and I... I can't talk now, dude. I got a champion to set straight. Whoa! You get trashed again? We're wasting our time, man. As long as that dweeb's around, we'll never get near Gil. Calm down, Frank and Tyke. We're not dead yet. Speak for yourself, man. I haven't had this much fun on the beach since I buried Long John Silver. Hey, that's cool. stirs my soul more than a cheery campfire howl. What marsh did you get these mallows from? Because they look marvelous. Hey, thanks for letting us camp out, Teach. You're pretty cool. Make that c cold, Vinny. Indeed. Now this is what I call a beautiful evening. Cold, damp. Hi, folks. Mind if we warm up at your fire? Sure. Have a seat. 
Uh, you cold? Not anymore. Hey, little dude, you guys still hanging out? Gil! Smart move, teacher dude. You're gonna have the best seats to watch me win the contest tomorrow. That's not why we're here, Gil. Yeah, we came because we want you to come back to school. School? Yeah, you remember. Big drafty place, lots of blackboards. How about coming back, man? No way, dudes. Kahuna Bob says after I ace the competition tomorrow, I'll be a legend on this beach. Say, Mr. Legend, where does Kahuna Bob live anyway? Down the beach, I guess. I haven't seen it, but it's got to be like one Mongo mansion. Dinner is served. Here are the pizzas you ordered. I got one just the way you like it, Gil. With live anchovies. Whoa! Extra live anchovies. Now then, who ordered the toxic waste pizza with olives? Mmm. Want a slice, Mr. S? Uh, no thanks, Sid. I think I'll take a little walk. Hey, I miss you too, little dude. But when it comes to this school thing, I'm like a total wipeout. I'm not exactly the class brain myself, man. Like, uh, someone dumped me in Edsel. All I know is, when it comes to serpent, I'm like a genius. When I'm in the slot, like riding the waves, like I'm totally bulletproof. Whoop de doo. Excuse me, I'm looking for the residents of Kahuna. Bob? Gil's teacher, right? Come on in. Thanks. And it's ex-teacher. Hmm. Interesting place you've got here. Not exactly the House of Champions, is it? How about some beans? No, thanks. I already passed up a toxic waste pizza. I came to talk about Gil. Mega talent. <laughs> Reminds me of myself when I was a kid. Surfing was everything to me. I even dropped out of school to catch more wave time. Really? So you advise Gil to quit school, too? Me? I never told Gil to quit. Why would I? So he could end up living like this? I don't get it. You were a big champion. And a bigger chump. I got cheated out of all my money because I didn't know better. And I didn't know better because I never finished high school. Hmm. Well, here's your chance to teach Gil what you had to learn the hard way. Gil, the buzz is you've got this year's Kiwi Cola Trophy locked. Mucho thanks so, TV dudo. Now, about this radical wetsuit. Later, Trent. Hey, man, how come you never told me you quit school? No big deal. Why waste time in school when, like, I can have all this? Serves up, Gil! Serves up, Gil! Serves up, Gil! Hey, dude, Gil. this beach Serves isn't going anywhere. Gil. But without an education, neither are you. <laughs> Whoa there, dude. I think you're, like, jealous because I'm the top kahuna now. Well, kahuna, any luck? I wiped out, man. But there's always another wave. This is Trent Flatlip, bringing you the Kiwi Cola Surf Championship. Boy, the surf fanatics are out today in some of the gnarliest get-ups this reporter has ever seen. Let's get out of here, man. This place is a breeding ground for human dweebs. Well, we might as well stick around and cheer for Gil, because after today... Why, we may never see the boy again. Hey, yo, then I'm going to get a better seat. And now, lining up for his run, Australia's tidal wave wallaby, Jammin' Jimbo McClimbo. If anybody can handle today's treacherous water conditions, Jimbo's the dude to do it to it. Ouch! It looks like Jimbo got jambo that time. Corky Laguna's up. Oh, Corky Laguna's down. But here comes Monty Zuma. He's looking good. No, Monty gets mauled. And now, here comes the Gill Man. What control, what finesse. What magazine is that? Go, Gill, go! Oh. Yeah! Waterman's a cinch to win. No one can touch him. This kid is a monster. Ah! So tell me something I don't know. This kid is unbelievable. But wait, there's another wave slider out there. Can't be. Yes, it is. 
It's Kahuna Bob! But I thought he'd hung up his jams and retired. Yeah, so did I. Like, what gives, Kahuna, dude? I'm out here to show you you still got a lot to learn, Gal. <laughs> What a bodacious ride! Hey, are you okay, Gilman? Hang loose, we'll get you out. Kahuna! 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 You were awesome out there, man. Yeah, but he was awesomer. Kahuna, how does it feel recapturing the coveted Kiwi Cola crown? Later, Trent. Like, like, wow, you totally trashed me, dude. But, but why? To teach you a lesson, Gil Buddy. He'll never be the best without learning the basics. And that means staying in school. Right, Schneider, dude? Right on, Kahuna. Are we leaving now, Schneider? Yes, Boneyard, I'd say we're all ready to go. Well, class, I guess Gil's not showing up. I'll be your amigo for Spanish today. Buenos dias, Frank and Tyke. Sorry I'm late, teacher dude, but I had to show a new kid the way to school. How's it hanging, dudes? Buenos dias, Gil man. Buenos dias, uh, human dweeb. Very good, Frank and Tyke, but you dudes are way tardy, man. Like, better late than never, man. Yo, what's up? This is Will Smith, but my friends call me the Fresh Prince. But now that I'm in my new crib, you can call me His Royal Freshness, right? So, yo, watch The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Monday on NBC. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Vincent Malloy is seven years old. He's always polite and does what he's told. For a boy his age, he's considerate and nice. But he wants to be just like Vincent Price. He doesn't mind living with his sister, dog, and cats. Though he'd rather share a home with spiders and bats. There he could reflect on the horrors he's invented. And wander dark hallways of low men torment. Vincent is nice when his aunt comes to see him, but imagines dipping her in wax for his wax museum. He likes to experiment on his dog, Abercrombie. 
in the hopes of creating a horrible zombie. So he and his horrible zombie dog could go searching for victims in the London fog. His thoughts, though, aren't only of ghoulish crime. He likes to paint and read to pass some of the time, while other kids read books like Go, Jane, Go. Vincent's favorite author is Edgar Allan Poe. One night, while reading a gruesome tale, he read a passage that made him turn pale. Such horrible news he could not survive, for his beautiful wife had been buried alive. out her grave to make sure she was dead, unaware that her grave was his mother's flower bed. His mother sent Vincent off to his room. He knew he'd been banished to the Tower of Doom, where he was sentenced to spend the rest of his life, alone with the portrait of his beautiful wife. While alone and insane, encased in his tomb, Vincent's mother burst suddenly into the room. She said, if you want to, you can go out and play. It's sunny outside and a beautiful day. Vincent tried to talk, but he just couldn't speak. The years of isolation had made him quite weak. So he took out some paper and scrawled with a pen, I am possessed by this house and can never leave it again. His mother said, you're not possessed and you're not almost dead. These games that you play are all in your head. You're not Vincent Price, you're Vincent Malloy. You're not tormented or insane, you're just a young boy. You're seven years old and you are my son. I want you to get outside and have some real fun. Her anger now spent, she walked out through the hall. And while Vincent backed slowly against the wall, the room started to sway, to shiver and creak. His horrid insanity had reached its peak. He saw Abercrombie, his zombie slave, and heard his wife call from beyond the grave. She spoke from her coffin and made ghoulish demands, while through cracking walls reached skeleton hands. Every horror in his life that had crept through his dreams swept his mad laughter to terrified screams. To escape the madness, he reached for the door but fell limp and lifeless down on the floor. His voice was soft and very slow as he quoted the raven from Edgar Allan Poe. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Uh, today I'm going to tell you all about scary things. I was just reading my favorite scary ghost story. You can sit on the edge of the bed and listen, Vern, but don't let your feet dangle over because the, the boogeyman might grab you. And as he stepped down into the cellar, the bloody hand slowly crawled across the floor. He felt a cold wind across his cheek. And a lonely voice cried. And a big furry hand 
started to cross his face and <laughs> just relax, Burn. It's just a scary story. There's no real boogeyman. Hey, Burn. Today's your lucky day. We knew you wouldn't want to oversleep, Burn. We only do it once a week, Burn. Me and all the other guys, Burn. We even brought the pies, Burn. It's you're in a speed war with a story and a moral and a big chuckle hip trip double dip super duper green show. You know what I mean? Hey, Burn, we moved your furniture, and now we're gonna fire up the barbecue, Burn. We owe it all to you, Burn. But now you gotta move, Burn! Hey, hey Burn! Hey, Burn! Hey, Burn, it's me! I'm on TV! Hey, Burn, it's scary things. Hey, Burn. I've decided to take matters into my own hands. This boogeyman has terrorized you long enough. It'll ruin your childhood, Burn. Now, you are looking at the genuine article. The Ernest P. World Boogeyman Trap. Designed to strike fear into any creature that would dare to dwell under your bed. But first, the bait. Tiny shoes, Vern. We are talking pre-adolescent footwear. They love pre-adolescent footwear. Well, first I gotta make one small adjustment. It's dark under there, Vern. Well, I'm not scared or anything, but would you mind grabbing my feet? Vern, grab my feet. Vern, I... Oh, I see him, Vern. I see the boogeyman. Oh, he's horrible. He's, he's insincere. He's got a bright yellow face and, uh, and a little beady eyes. Uh. Me and my brother Bobby here just love Halloween. Ain't that right, Bobby? I especially like the trick-or-treating part. Bobby's kind of scared of trick-or-treating. I think he's a fraidy cat or something. <laughs> yeah, I get all dressed up and ready to go, and he's always lagging behind. Ain't that right, Bobby? Now, this year, I told him he's going to be fast, and if he's not, I'm going to leave without him. Ain't that right, Bobby? Bobby! <laughs> Happy children. Laughter. Beautiful flowers. Warm puppies. There's too much kindness in the neighborhood. I know. I become a dentist. All it takes is a diploma, a good attitude, and, and membership in a prominent country club. Anyone could become a dentist. <laughs> hey, Vern, it's me. Fooled you, didn't I, Vern? And it'll fool the boogeyman, too. You see, Vern, the boogeyman will think this is me. But when he grabs me, he will pull this rope which will release a boogeyman proof net, and the boogeyman will be ours. Now, Vern, the boogeyman is sure to hit the garage because it's dark in there and damp, and it smells like worms. But lucky for us, Vern, the great Ernest P. Worrell does not know the meaning of fear. Fear, Vern, fear, F-E-A-R, noun, the feeling of being afraid. Hi, Matt Finnish here, photographer at large. With the help of about 40 plastic bats, some candles, and those tombstones back there, I'm going to take a picture of a real ghost. You ready? Lights, please. Now, kids, we're just going over to the Johnsons for dinner, and I'm sure you'll like the new babysitter. Her name is Auntie Nelda. She's supposed to be a real screen. Oh, good. Here she comes now. Hi, kids. Boy, are we going to have fun together. 
First, we're going to comb the tangles out of our hair with a metal brush. And then, if you're very good, we're going to floss our teeth. Hi, I'm Artist Tug. I think we're at the dentist. I really don't like it when Artist goes to the dentist. We got... Uh-oh, we're opening wide. Oh, no. It's a shot of Novocaine. Dentists are always giving shots of Novocaine. Laugh, laugh! Oh, no, I'm going to go numb and Mr. T's going to biting me. Oh, I really don't like it when Artist goes to the dentist. <laughs> Then the pecan pie oozed across the table, lingering closer and closer to the child's elbow. Then... It Girl. Went, oh, hi! Oh, hey there, Ernest. How about a haircut? Just reading a little book. Have a seat. Sure, I'll lower those ears for you. Ooh, you're looking pretty shaggy, aren't you? Gosh, Earl, do you remember the first haircut you gave me? Oh, well, of course I do. Well, you were three years old. Boy, you were pretty scared, weren't you? <laughs> I wasn't scared, Earl. I was just a little anxious. Oh, yeah. But a first haircut can be kind of scary. Boy, you can say that again. I'll never forget the first haircut I ever gave. Now, that was scary. <laughs> it sure was. All right, Ernest, how much you want off today? Well, just a little off the top and kind of thin out the sides. Uh-huh. All righty. I want you to make me look like you did when I was three. Like a little Wall Street tycoon. Oh, uh, okie dokie, Ernest. You just hold real still there. Now, don't don't get excited. Hold it. Hold Hello. it. Right hold it. Hold it. Yeah. All right. We got that. Now. <laughs> There you go, Ernest. Take a look. See what you think, huh? Ah! Earl, I said I wanted you to make me look like a like a Wall Street tycoon. Oh, silly me. I thought you said a, a baby baboon. It, but what do you think? Do you like it? It could work. Haircut! Ah! <laughs> hey, Vern. I just got to go down and... Change that old burnout light bulb in the basement, know what I mean? Sure is dark and scary down there when the light bulb burns out, isn't it? Burn the... You didn't happen to borrow my flashlight, did you? You know, the, the blue one with the batteries in it? Well, Vern, I, I just gotta go for it. I'm going in. It's me or mean old Mr. Darkness. I gotta be brave, huh? I gotta be a boogeyman warrior. Well, wish me luck. Ernest, Ernest, run for your life. It's, it's the boogeyman. Uh... My father, the clown. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Mom, are Skeeter and I identical twins? No, Eddie, you're what they call fraternal twins. What does that mean? It just means that you're not exactly alike. You'd forgotten their birthday. Birthday? Oh, that's what it was I forgot to remember. You did not oh. know. <laughs> Where'd you get them, honey? All right, a seltzer bottle. Wow. <laughs> Skeeter, you be careful with that. Oh, sweetheart, it's only seltzer. Right, Skeeter? Right, Dad. <laughs> Last night, my mommy told my daddy not to talk so loud because the walls have ears. I thought the walls had wallpaper. Boy, grown-ups sure talk funny. Know what I mean? <laughs>
after these messages, we'll be right back. I'm Freddy Krueger, and you're invited to my special get-together. But beware, you may never leave. Dial this number now. I've got some grisly details for you. And if you're one of my lucky callers selected at random, you'll talk to me live while you're awake and safe. So dial this number now if you dare. Talk to me live. Freddy Krueger is waiting just for you. Two dollars for the first minute, 35 cents each additional minute. This morning, Billy looked like any other boy, but as the moon rose, he turned into a werewolf. He used new Pa's Halloween makeup kits. His friends did, too. Look, Mike's a vampire. Amy's a ghost. Pa's makeup is safer than masks. It never blocks vision, and it's hypoallergenic, too. So watch your kids turn into the creatures they really are with new Pa's Halloween makeup kits. Quagga granola dips, a hauntingly wholesome Halloween treat. Chewy granola dipped in real milk chocolate. Chocolate and granola, lose my self-control and granola dips. The perfect treat for your little monsters. <laughs> Hey, Ronald, what are those things you're wearing? My trick-or-treat safety cups. They're shiny aluminum foil with bright orange stripes, so they reflect light. Me? Where'd you get them? Right at McDonald's. <gasps> this Halloween, be sure you're all wearing McDonald's trick-or-treat safety cups. Children should be seen and not hurt. Here it is, Vern. The darkest and scariest place known to man. You know there's a boogeyman living under the porch. I've got my flashlight, I've got my baseball bat, and most importantly, Vern, I've got on my trick shoes. Boogeymen hate trick shoes, Vern, because they like their victims to run in straight lines. But I'm not gonna give him that satisfaction. All right, here goes. He's not under there, Vern. Let's take a break. Yeah, Vern? I'm going down into the basement one more time. Yes, the basement, Vern. The scourge of humanity. A known watering hole for the North American boogeyman. And remember, Vern, don't cut on the light until I tell you. They scare easy. Boogeyman! I'm on the first step. Boogeyman, I I'm on the second step. Boogeyman, I'm on the fourth step. The third step, dummy. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm on the third step. You gotta let them know you're coming, Bird. Even boogeymen deserve common courtesy, you know what I mean? Boogeyman, I'm on the fourth step. Remember, Burn, watch your feet. They've been known to grab your feet from underneath the stairs. Know what I mean? Boogeyman! I'm on the fifth step. Ah, burn! Ah, I'm stuck, Burn! I'm stuck! He got me on the fifth step, Burn! Help me, Burn! Burn, turn on the light, please! The trick shoes aren't working! Burning! Burn! Well, hello. I'm Dr. Otto, your friendly dentist. Why don't we hop into this beat and see how much damage we've done to our friend, the teeth. Now open wide. <laughs> ah. <gasps> you've been taking care of your teeth. I bet you've been brushing after every meal, probably eating a healthy diet. I bet you've even been flossing. You're the worst patient I've ever had. Rinse your mouth and get out of my office. And don't come back until you've eaten two pounds of jelly beans. Just relax, Vern. It's just a little scary spider. I'm sure it can't be as big as you said it was. 
And in fact, since this is a water spout, I'm sure it was just an itsy bitsy spider. But don't worry, I'll have him out of there in no time. Your buddy Ernest knows just what to do. Oh, Vern, that spider in your mouth looks gross. Spit it out, spit it out. Ew. Trick or treat, smell our feet, give us something good to eat. <laughs> Oh, I think that I would reconsider that treat, sir. You don't understand. M my brother Bobby here is a full high-kicking karate ninja assassin. He... The... Oh, you, you... You're a real tough guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Our mistake. Bobby, hang on to yourself. Control yourself, Bobby. It's okay. Hey, 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 Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. There's always next Halloween, and there may be french fries just down the street. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Gus Bunny. Boy, I could sure use your help. I'm looking for the boogeyman. Ah, uh, come on, Ernie, baby. There's no such thing as a boogeyman. If there were, he'd be looking for you. Existo, the magician. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I, of course, am the great Existo, the outstanding. And I have here a, just a normal hanky or little scarf. And I'm going to tie it around my eye so I can't see a thing. And now my lovely assistant will put an apple on top of her head, and I will knock it off with nothing but a baseball. And it's one... Two and three. Are you ready? Yeah. Whoa! Right or left? Which? All right. Hey, what? Oh, what? Am I even close? Oh, left. too low. Oh, oh my goal. Talk to me, people. Yes. Right or left? Hey, Burn. Here it is. The boogeyman trap. Okay. We sealed up every crack and crevice. So the boogeyman has to come through this window right here. And when he does, you trap it. Okay, let's try it, Burn. Here comes mean old Mr. Boogeyman. Do 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 Now, Burn, now! What happened, Burn? It didn't work. What went wrong? The boogeyman trap's supposed to be foolproof. Yo, <laughs> burn my my hands, burn it. Burn. The boogeyman, he's got me, burn. He's got me. Run, save yourself. <laughs> I used to dine with kings. Magazines wouldn't have view me. But once they've known me for a while. People seem to look right through me. Am I invisible? Sometimes you act like I'm not here. Am I invisible? You tell me if I disappear. It's just that now and then I fear I'm not making myself clear. I'm feeling miserable. Am I invisible again this year? Okay, Burn. Let's try this boogeyman trap one more time. Okay, you ready? Here comes mean old Mr. Boogeyman. Watch out, Burn. He's going for the trap. <laughs> he tricked us, Burn. He tricked us. Hey, oh, I'm Mac, and this is my roommate, George. And there's nothing better we like to do on a dark and stormy night like tonight than read scary stories. Let's see now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The door to the alien spaceship slowly opened and out crawled the most grotesque monster that Captain Spaulding ever encountered in his travels across the galaxies. Its lidless, red-rimmed eyes stared at the captain with a cold, reptilian smile 
while his long, whip-like tail thrashed the deck of the damaged spacecraft. And worst of all, the captain could see that the monster's skin was made up of shimmering, hideous, green scales. Ah! Me and my brother Bobby love going through the funhouse. Ain't that right, Bobby? <laughs> I've got to go along with him because he's a scary cat. <laughs> Let it rip! One disgusting attic. I bet boogeymen take their summer vacations up here. Know what I mean? He's just got to be in the attic, Vern. We've looked every other place in the house. But stay close, Vern. Boogeymen hate the buddy system. Know what I mean? Did you hear that, Vern? It's him, Vern. I just know it's got to be him. Ah! It's him, Vern. It's the boogeyman. He's horrible and hideous and ugly. He's your worst nightmare. He's... He's got eyes like a fly, and he's still there. <laughs> you know, Vern, this has really been a big lesson to me. There never was anything under my bed or in the closet or even up here in the attic. It was just my own imagination playing tricks on me. I guess I'm my own worst boogeyman, know what I mean? Just goes to show you, Vern, every cloud has got a silver lining. We've got nothing to fear but fear itself, and Vern, Stop, turn right on red, know what I mean? <laughs> Who was that fella, Vern? Snappy dresser, though, know what I mean? Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Don't worry. 
sorry, Carlos. I can get us back to civilization. Back to civilization? After all these years? They can't do this to us. I say, we've got to get rid of them. Defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. This is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! became 
became the mighty Battle Cat, and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. Our friends, the Sorceress, Man at Arms, and Orko. Together, we defend Castle Greyskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. <laughs> Here's our plan. Using our secret map, you will enter the royal palace and capture Queen Marlena. Cobra Khan will bring her to me while Merman guards the way. And Whiplash and Clawful will lead He-Man to my pet, Screech. <laughs> <laughs> Orko and Cringer. I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. I don't know about Cringer, but Orko said he had a new magic trick to show us. I can hardly wait. Oh, Father, sometimes I think you're jealous. <laughs> oh, jealous? <laughs> lunchtime! Come on, lazy bones. Everyone's ready but you. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> anything wrong. It's Cringer. He's just a big Brady cat. Oh, I gotta go now. I'm late for lunch. <laughs> now to the banquet room. No. First we must take the queen. Quiet, you fools. Follow me. And now for my new magic trick. I was afraid of this. Orko, don't do that. <laughs> it's empty. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> Very funny. Do I get some fruit juice to drink or not? That's enough. Stop! Stop! I, I command you! Some trick. Look at this mess. Uh-oh. Well, yeah, I'll clean it up. Thanks. I'll do it myself. I've had enough of your magic tricks for one day. <laughs> Where's Queen Marlena? Taking a little nap, I think. Cringer, why don't you see if she's ready for lunch? <laughs> All right, but uh, save some food for me. Hey, it's all gone. Thanks to your magic tricks. Queen Marlena, are you awake? She's still asleep. I, I, I guess I better wait till she wakes up. I hope Adam doesn't eat everything. Let's see how they like my mist of sleepiness. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. What's wrong? Oh dear, I'm getting sleepy too. What's that? It doesn't sound like Adam or Man at Arms. I think I'll wait under the bed. Is that fog or, or smoke? Merman and I will take the queen to Skeletor. You two must hide our 
trail and meet He-Man into Skeletor's strap. Screech will take care of him then. <laughs> ah, this will fool He-Man. Bring it, Whiplash. Let's go. What happened? Oh, everyone fell asleep. Where's Queen Marlena? Cringer went to get her, he never came back. We better check her room. <gasps> She's gone! And Cringer, too! This is a job for He-Man. By the power of Grayskull! He Now let's take a look outside. Hey, man! Oh, what's happening? You were all put to sleep, and now the queen is gone. Look, seaweed. I found this by the door. There's more seaweed over there. So, Merman and his friends were here. There's the trail. If we hurry, we can catch them. We'll take the Dragon Walker. Orko, you stay here. When King Randor wakes up, tell him what happened. Hey, get all the fun. Oh, what a nice nap. The queen's gone. Oh, she must be eating. I hope there's some f f food left. Don't worry, Cringer. He-Man's on the job with the dragon walker. It, it, it's all my fault. I, I heard them coming and uh, I was afraid. I, I, I should have tried to stop them. There are many of them. Look how many footprints there are. They went this way. I shouldn't have hidden under the bed. Well, why am I afraid all the time? What, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Wait, the, the queen wasn't taken this way. How do you know? My, my nose tells me. G queen Marlena was taken into the haunted forest. But, but He-Man followed the other trail. Oh, no. Cringer and I will find her. We will? Yes, we will. If anyone follows you, they'll have to cross the footbridge. I'll be waiting for them. <laughs> My nose tells me they, they took the queen down to the river. Oh, they must have had a boat. We better cross over here. Queen. 
I can see that. Welcome to my humble home, Queen Marlena. I command you let me go, Skeletor. Now. Oh, no, not yet. You're the bait for my trap. He-Man will take care of you. He-Man will take care of no one. I have a surprise for him. Behold! <laughs> He-Man will never expect an attack from a bomb. This time, Screech will bring him to me as my prisoner. <laughs> Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Great Halloween parties begin at Walgreens. Candy, party decorations, masks, costumes, makeup. Everything you need for Halloween fun now at Walgreens. Hallmark's ready for Halloween, and you know, it's the strangest thing. Everybody's wild about new scratch and sniff stickers in special trick-or-treat packages. And they're dying to take home these cuddly pumpkin bean bags. And these party decorations are so popular, they seem to just disappear. So come to Hallmark, the Halloween store. <laughs> We're waiting for you. Halloween's coming. What are you going to do about it? Whether you do a little or a lot, be an original this Halloween and find yourself at Hallmark. Hallmark has a way. And at participating Hallmark stores, get your hands on the spooky sounds tape, full of creepy sounds and Halloween theme songs. $1.95 with any $5 Hallmark purchase, only at participating Hallmark stores. Ah! It's a scream. My big friend, I love the big taste of chocolate in this little Hershey's kiss. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Hershey's Kisses, the little kiss with the big taste. swallowed half the river and all the fish. What kind of merman? You don't like my little ones? Well, they like you. Get them! <laughs> to be something after you. Don't be afraid of your own imagination. You're right, Oracle. Let's find Queen Marlena. Hurry, they're getting away. Queen Marlena, we've come to save you. Orko, Cringer, I've never been so happy to see you two. It's locked tight. Well, Orko, don't you have any tricks up your sleeve? Uh, let me see, I had some keys somewhere. Oh, I said keys, not cheese. Well, one of these should work. Oh, bless you, Orko. Listen, Skeletor is planning to trap He-Man. His bionic falcon will attack him from the air. We must stop it. Oh, it's too dangerous for you. We've got to take you back to the palace. But He-Man must be warned. I'll warn him. You? Well, I, I got everyone into this mess in the first place. I, I've got to try to warn He-Man. Oh, I hope I can make it. Dear 
Have more faith in yourself, Cringer. We have faith in you. That's right. And just to make sure, I'm gonna give you my magic charm for bravery and courage. There, I made it just for you, Cringer. Now you can be as brave as He-Man. Thanks, Orko. I, I feel braver already. Now, if we can only find our way out of here. Whiplash and Clawful are going inside. We'll never catch them now. The gates are staying open. We can follow them. I don't think so. It's too easy. Skeletor is up to something. He wants us to enter Snake Mountain. And I'd like to know why. Is this tunnel ever going to end? I don't care what Oracle says about darkness. I'm glad there's some light. Ooh, I spoke too soon. Who goes there? Just me, 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 me. I thought there was no such thing as ghosts. You thought wrong. How dare you trespass in Skeletor's domain? You must be punished. Oh, oh, you, 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 you can't do anything to me. I, I have my charm of, of, of bravery and, and courage. Growl! It works! Maybe a trap, E-Man, but I think we have to take our chances to save Queen Marlena. I don't know. I have a funny feeling about this. E-Man doesn't want to come into my lair. We'll have to take the battle to him. Prepare to attack. You will surprise He-Man from above. Grab him in your claws and carry him to the Lake of Oblivion and drop him in. <laughs> I wish Battle Cat were here. Are you ready, my darling Screech? Attack! Oh, Charm, you better do your duty. <laughs> That's He-Man down there! Way down there! You're right, Man-at-Arms. We can wait no longer. Attack! There's He-Man! Grab him! <laughs> it's Cringer. He was warning us! Now we must save him! You, you can't see now, Screech! He-Man is on his way. We'd better get out of here. You fools! I'll have to let Screech take care of He-Man. Something the matter with Screech. It's that silly cat again. I'll have to take control myself. Screech, you stupid machine, come to your master. I command you. <laughs> Doesn't anyone ever clean up around here? What a mess. Get them, you fools! Cool off, Merman. Would you mind holding this for me, Clawful? I'll give you a taste of my tail, He-Man. No thanks, Whiplash. Let's tie up some loose ends, Whiplash. See you later, alligator. Take this, He-Man. Now you 
take it, Skeletor. Ouch! I'm getting out of here! Where is Queen Marlena? We must find her. She's safe. Oracle took her back to the palace. Well, then let's join her. <laughs> Cringer, come forth. For outstanding acts of bravery, I award you this medal. Oh, thanks, King Randor, but, but, but I really don't deserve it. I, I, I wouldn't have been brave at all if it wasn't for the charm of bravery and courage that Orko gave me. Huh? It's, it's gone. Oh, I lost it. Oh, no, no, no. Don't be mad at me, Orko. That's all right, Cringer. It wasn't a real charm anyway. I just made it up to make you feel better. <laughs> you mean it, it, it was a, a fake? He means it didn't work. <laughs> Sounds like Orko's magic, all right. But don't you see, Cringer, you were brave all by yourself. And this medal proves it. Well, I guess we won't be able to call you Freddy Cat anymore, Cringer. Well, I guess not. Why, with my new medal, I'll be the bravest animal in all of Eternia. No! <laughs> Courage and fear are two important instincts. And we should pay attention to both. Sometimes being afraid is just as important as being brave. I guess I was a double Freddy cat. How's that, Cringer? Because I was afraid of being afraid. I see. Well, how do you feel now? Oh, much better. Now I'm just afraid of being brave. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't win. See you all next time. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way.
Thank you.
when we get there. I want to hear a lot of noise. from the prairie people. Sounds like trouble, big pard. Let's go. Come on, you varmints. Ah, our job's to get Brave Star to come after us, so Thunderstick and Scuzz can rob the weapons depot. <laughs> Brave, Brave Star should be busy with those dingoes. Now let's get ready to take those weapons. This ought to be a cinch. <laughs> Let's let's go. <laughs> we've, we've disabled their computer alert system and put their guards in dreamland. This is gonna be like taking candy from ba ba babies. Yeah, big babies. <laughs> Sounds like a wild party. Guess we'll just have to break it up. <laughs> All right, you varmints. Get ready. Here comes Mr. Big Shot Brave Star. Right on time. Everybody pull back, but keep up the noise. <laughs> it's our old friends, the Dingoes. Brave Star! <laughs> Looks like those galoots were partied out. They sure were easy to chase away. Yeah, too easy. I wonder if they brought us here on purpose. I told, told you swapping these explosives would be a piece piece of cake. Uh, we meet again. It is a pity that you insist on pursuing your evil ways. I'm sick, sick of your preaching, shaman. Let's see how you like my freeze ray. Oh, he can't swipe me! You're safe for now, so we'll be on our way. Maybe sometime Brave Star and Shaman cannot come help us. <laughs> Brave Star and Shaman always come, always help. <laughs> Where are we? In a cave, stoop, stupid. Why don't you get smart and you can start by giving up them CCCRs. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> Which way do we go? <laughs> Follow me, Mimi. The raid on the settlement was just to draw me away from the real target, the warehouse. But I had to make sure the prairie people weren't harmed. Mm, you did the right thing. But the prairie people must also find their own strengths and learn to stand up against their enemies. But they need our protection. Uh, this reminds me of a time when you were young. But Shaman, ever since that Tuga got his mother, I've taken care of Rowie. He needs my protection. Until now, he needed your care and protection. But it is time for Rowie to learn to stand on his own, to protect himself. But Shaman, he's so helpless, and there's so much danger in the forest. Mm, 
yes, there is danger. But you must have faith, young Bravestar. Do you remember? Yes, Yaman, I remember. And I also remember later when we were walking in the woods. Shaman, look, it's Rowie. Isn't he beautiful? He has grown up well. Shaman, that Tugger's going to get Rowie. Mm, maybe so, maybe not. He got away. Uh, he has learned to take care of himself and not to count on young Bravestar to protect him. I understand. I understand, Shaman. But when will it be time for the Prairie People to learn that? Uh, I cannot say. But when it comes, you will know. This, this is the only tunnel we haven't tried. <laughs> Why does tunnel not lead to outside? <laughs> hey, you meat meathead. Where are you? Something thunder stick. So you found a big rock. Big deal, deal. Come on, let's get going. This special rock like big mirror. Scus taken hang up in room. <laughs> you witless worms. How do you manage to box every assignment I give you? Miserable gnat! Stop your whimpering! What is that you are cowling behind, you snibbling clod? This is just a mirror rock Scuzz find in cave! Mirror? What is mirror? This shiny side like big mirror! <laughs> you don't! That's not a mirror rock! By the look of a foot, you found the haunted shield of bacteria. We have? I've heard of it. Used in battle, it reflects all powers that come against it. Correct! And now it's mine! I think it's time to plan another pair of raids. This time, I want Shaman to come to save the day, because I'll be ready for him with my new surprise! <laughs> Small, small sample. Give it up. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> hmm, back so soon for another lesson. Your thirst for knowledge seems to be unquenchable. I'm afraid the thirst was mine, shaman. And it isn't for knowledge. But for confrontation, those little prairie people in the mine are doomed to spend the rest of their lives as my slaves, unless you can stop me. It's the shield of Spectarius. Have a pleasant journey, shaman. <laughs> These messages will be right back. What strange creatures are lurking in the night? Oh, skull face, mummy face too. Oh, cool face. What a frightful sight. Yes, Mom, this Halloween your kids can have fun creating their own scary disguise with Kooky Spooks makeup. They just smear it on. When the makeup dries, it cracks to make them look really old and ghoulish. Add in the sheet and the costume is complete. Kooky Spooks makeup kits, six frightening disguises to choose from. <laughs> I think you'll like this house. Uh, isn't this supposed to be haunted? Haunted? What an absurd idea. <laughs> so, I mean, what would a ghost be doing here? <laughs> haunted. David. No other diet soft drink delivers the real cola taste of one calorie diet Coke. The real one. It's lifting more and more spirits every day. The move is on to diet Coke. Diet Coke. Just had the greatest idea. Let's spend the night. In the fun house. This better be good. It's gonna be great. Something is alive in the fun house. Something deadly. 
something evil. I don't know what that thing is. Something that tonight will turn the funhouse into a carnival of terror. The funhouse rated R starts Friday at a theater near you. This Halloween, give the safe treat. Thank you. That helps treat the disabled. Thank you. Give Easter Seal safe Halloween coupons. Thank you. Good for special treats at local stores and restaurants. Thank you. Give Easter Seal safe Halloween coupons. Thank you. And give the treat that gives treatment. Thank you. Safe Halloween booklets are now available at these fine stores. Support a safe Halloween for children everywhere. useless. The full force of my own power has strained my strength. At last, Shaman is out of my way. Now I can do as I please. A lone brave star cannot stop me. I wouldn't underestimate brave brave star. He's a pretty tough customer. Are you questioning me, you worthless tin germ? No, 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 not at all. Not at all, your greatness. We are about to unleash the most savage reign of terror that New Texas has ever seen. We'll start with the Prairie People. Their underground network covers this whole planet. Once we control it, the rest will be easy. Maybe we can rest a few hours this time before we have to go hightailing it out to rescue someone again. Hey, you listen to me. I, I just saw a shaman. He's in real trouble. Come on, we're heading for Star Peak. Uh oh, trouble at the settlement again. But the shaman's in trouble too. And he'd be the first to tell you to do your duty, Marshal. You're right, Pard. Let's go. Three more slaves for Stampede. <clears throat> Look. They're taking off with those prairie people. Let's go get them. <laughs> Too late, brave, brave star. You're not getting anyone. <laughs> Better get your eyes checked, Thunderstick. I'm up here. And I am up here. Think you're pretty cute, cute, huh? I'll show you. Free some scars. <laughs> How about a game of Bend the Thunderbolt, partner? You're on, Marshal. Don't just stand, stand there, you ninny. Come on. That truck that took the prairie people got a pretty good head start. It's not how you start that counts. It's how you finish. Speed of the Puma. Speed of the Puma. <laughs> my friends. I have some bad news. I have to go away for a while. Shaman is lost and in danger. I must find him before it's too late. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You give me big shame. Brave Star always helped prairie people. Now we help Brave Star. Let him look for Shaman. We fight Stampede. And we help ourselves. Yeah! Thanks, little partner. Just hold him off as best you can, and I'll be back. That's a promise. Shaman must be very weak. I'm just getting vague impressions. <laughs> vague impressions of what? Ice and cold. Rising vapors. Suffocating mist everywhere. He's somewhere in the plains of doom. Somewhere? You gotta be more specific. That's a big place. We'll just have to go there. 
If I can get close enough, I'll be able to sense his location. I must commend you on your consistency. You botched up every job I've sent you on. Fortunately for you, I'm giving you another chance. And this time, you won't have to worry about Bravestar. He's on a little mission of mercy that may take him longer than he thinks. <laughs> now, I want you to go out there and capture all the prairie people. Don't let a single one get away. Maybe Brave Star never finds Shaman. Brave Star finds Shaman. You wait and see. Are you picking up anything yet? He's lying at the bottom of a deep canyon. <laughs> this place is loaded with canyons. He's over there. Hang on, Shaman. I'm coming. <laughs> Star, my power is drained. I'll take you home. The magic that flows through Star Peak will restore your powers. Remember Stampede's orders. Not one prairie person must must escape. No worry, this be cinch. <coughs> okay, they coming. Get ready. They be soon here. Come on, let's run him down. Okay, sharp ropes. Release big springs in road. Before the fire, grasp my hand, Brave Star. Now, hmm. we must let the magic flow. I'm not shamed no more. We fight outlaw. Give Brave Star time to look for Sharbin. Congratulations are in order for foiling the efforts of my clumsy band of nitwits. Whenever I want something done right, I have to do it myself. <laughs> Just a demonstration to show you what could happen if you don't do as I command. I am ready. The prairie people are in great danger. We must go to them. But Shaman, you haven't regained your full powers. Stay here, and I'll go alone. Mm, no, I will go. I must destroy the haunted shield. But Stampede's shield can reflect any ray you send. Ah, uh, not if he can't see it. Hurry up! Mighty Stampede has work work for you to do in the mines! Why don't you do Stampede's work for him, Thunderstick? Brave, brave star! Just the one I want to blast! You're getting rusty. What you need is some target practice. My pleasure! I'll blast, blast them to bits! How's that, brave, brave star? I'll get you next, next time, brave star! Okay, little pals. You're free now. Your carelessness surprises me, brave star. I never imagined you'd let yourself become such an easy target. Funny, I was thinking just the same thing about you. Fool, I'm not the easy target. Mm, but you are. From where I stand, you appear quite vulnerable. Oh, well, well. My dear shaman, you realize, of course, that your power will only be turned against you? Hmm, if that is true, then you have an unfair advantage. That is correct, shaman. 
I do have an unfair advantage, and I aim to use it. Your aim is poor, Stampede. Perhaps the advantage is not yours after all. Your boldness surprises me. You can't dodge my energy blast forever. Uh, now it's my turn to test my marksmanship. You surprise me with such foolishness, Shaman. But be my guest. <laughs> you cannot use the haunted shield to reflect my power if you cannot see me. Where'd he go? Looking for me? You folks did a mighty good job yourselves. Then hooray for everyone's! The prairie people sure know how to celebrate and have fun. Uh, they have much to celebrate. They've learned that they don't always have to depend on someone else when a difficult job needs to be done. You're right, Shaman. People never know what marvelous things they can do until they try. And I hope you remember that. Yes, I mean you. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next.
There's absolutely nothing to that silly old stupid station. So, nothing's going to happen. But, 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 but I live. Popeye, I'm not going out with you today. But I live. He's just a harmless cat which wants to make friends. <laughs> oh my gosh, the goldfish! The fish market is two blocks down. I turn to the right. <laughs> Olive! Look at yourself in the mirror, Ali, and sees how funny you looks. Popeye, breaking a mirror is seven years bad luck. <laughs> and I never want to see you again. <laughs> Tough luck, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Why, that double-crossing Pluto? So you see, Olive, this being Thursday the 12th and not Friday the 13th, it's safe for you to go out. Well, that's different. Look, Olive. A lucky horseshoe. Being under a ladder is bad luck. Bad luck? Oh, no! Three on a batch is very bad luck. <laughs> Stupid stations is the bunk. Oh my gosh. Bread and butter. <laughs> One defeat an enemy that possesses the ultimate weapon, invincibility. Worse still, how does one defeat an enemy that exists within one's very soul? A battlefield can exist in many places, 
including within one's own heart. makes me miss my flesh. Such utter annihilation would give me goosebumps. The humans have piqued my curiosity, however. What in the world has made them willing to fight us so fiercely here on this dismal bit of swamp? Why do they insist on fighting us at all? How many battles must they endure before they realize that we are invincible? For the Legion of Light! Legion of Light? Oh, please. <laughs> Come now, physician. Heal thyself. I'm getting a pulse indicator. For the Legion of Light. Cavalry's arrived. What? Leaving so soon? Oh no! We wouldn't hear of it, would we? <laughs> Why, the party's just starting. Hold still and this won't hurt a bit. Well, maybe a bit. Actually, it'll hurt a lot. You did good work down there, soldier. Well, well, those fleshies are proving more robust than I anticipated. Eh, no! That's my leg! Yeah, well, give me back my arm or I'll pound you with one of Bug Boys! <laughs> I can finish here, Madden. Alert the others, we'll head for the new camp as soon as Gamma Team returns. Dark, Grimskull, we can't give Guardian, up. this man needs aid. No, I'm fine. All right, soldier? I'm no soldier. My name's Ferris. All right, Ferris. Get yourself another sky cycle from supply. Guardian, are the others ready to move out? On your signal, Lightstar. This way. I supposed to make heads or tails of this two-dimensional gobbledygook? Ah, where's my holoputer? Holoputers require energy. That ancient generator we dragged along on this little romp gave out hours ago. You call this light? 
I can barely see the bones in front of my face. Ah, dear Baron, I hate this swamp even more than you. That's why I'm proposing a way that may allow us to leave sooner. Doctor, the humans possess frightfully little imagination. Whatever brought them to this swamp in the first place will bring them back eventually. And in the meantime, I rust solid. Please, Baron, hear me out. With my latest device, we can seek out the humans, rather than sit here like bones on a log waiting for them to make their move. Continue. An air gas spectral analysis unit. <laughs> I've whipped up a few of them in my spare time. With it, we can pick up the vapor trails of sky cycles. But I can reach out to dear Prince Joshua at any time. In theory, you're the only one possessed with that particular skill, and then only with Grimskull. Oh, looky here! This little light is going blinky blink blink! I think this is the perfect test for your little device. No! It's not the bike. I can't do this anymore. Do what? Play the brave soldier. Fight the good fight! Well, I'm not a brave soldier. I'm not good. I'm sorry about the others. I'm Gamma Team and the rest of your squad... You don't get it, do you? Why do you think I was the only one left after those... those monsters surrounded us and kept coming? And coming! It doesn't matter. Yes, it does! I survived because I ran. I tried. I... I, I, I mean, I, I think I tried, but they just kept coming! Do you really understand that? They just keep coming. You can't stop them. That's when I... Here. I hate those skeleton warriors! But I hate myself even more. Because now, I know what I am. You were scared. No! I was a coward. I'll let you know a little secret. After what I found out about myself out there, I realized something. I'm more like Baron Dark's boys than I am like you and the rest of the Legion's light. It's what's inside that counts. If I'd known we'd have this much luck, I'd have brought reinforcements! You're welcome! It can't be! They found us! Ferris! Ferris! Oh, oh dang it! Be a pile of jet over here, will you? He can't do it right away! <sighs> My, 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 what have we here? A runaway! How promising. Really, Dagger, I thought you knew how to drive! You wanna walk? It's fine by me! Watch it, Missy! Friendly fire can be downright painful. Oopsie. You fool! Darkest soul, evil's courier, serve me as a skeleton warrior! Score another one for our team! Yeah! <laughs> Ferris, no! No! We have to go. This way. Quickly! Joshua? Let me go! As you wish.
finish. I'm going back for Ferris. You can't. He won't listen to you now. You know that. <laughs> he's terrified of the skeleton warriors, and now he's one of them! No, oh, this is a nightmare. Justin! Help me go back for Ferris, please! If we could recapture him, then what? That young man's been skeletonized. He's no longer the Ferris any of us knew. And that's it, then? At least we know how they found us so easily. They traced the vapor trails from our sky cycles. I can't believe it! Ironic, isn't it? There at the bottom of the swamp sit the fusion converters we need for our sky cycles. With those converters in place, our cycles can't be traced. Baron Dark won't be able to track us. So, when do we leave? I can't bear to think what's happened to him. Don't. He doesn't. The moment he changed, he became a thing that doesn't care. You didn't. I didn't become a skeleton warrior. I just became a man who knows his own capacity for evil. Oh, Joshua, I'm sorry. Oh, don't pity me. I don't bear it well. I'm going after Ferris. Don't. It's impossible to help him. I can't believe that. I am going to bring him back if it takes the last Jennifer, breath I... Jennifer, no. I understand how you feel about Ferris, but I can't lose you. Understand that? To my newest warrior, Ferris! Mind if I borrow him for a dance, Baron? <laughs> Just don't hurt him too much. <laughs> you seem pleased with your new warrior. Talon seemed especially concerned over the fate of this fellow. Perhaps Ferris shall deliver the Lightstar Crystal right to our door. Or should I say, Lightstar's old door. All right, I'll take the north side. Madden, you and McLaren meet me there two minutes after my signal. We'll secure the cargo with the magna lifts, then rendezvous back here by the sky cycle hangar. Let's just hope the three of us can do what Gamma Team couldn't. Still can't find Talon? No. So, my stubborn niece has gone after Ferris. Lightstar will need your help with the converters when he gets back. You shouldn't have to deal with Baron Dark alone. Hmm. I do it all the time. At least Father isn't here to see what Baron Dark did to our old home. Ferris? Are you alright? I want you to come back with me. We'll do what we can to help you. Please? Come on, what do you say? I say... Gotcha! I'm here to help you! Ferris! <laughs> Ferris, don't do this! This? This is what I am now! You were a fool to come find me! What a proud day indeed. A royal loneliness has dropped by the old homestead for a brief visit. She's too pure of heart to serve me. We'll have to dispose of her. And when her sniveling siblings arrive? Then the crystal shall be mine. But the princess need not be with us in order to lure them in. Such lovely pale skin. Pity I can't relieve you of it. I just have one thing to say, Baron. Hmm, yes? Get some breath mints. Show your guest out! Permanently! I know you, Ferris. You can't really hurt me. Do it, Ferris, before I do it for you. I'll be back for you, I promise. Goodness, Talon. Where are my manners? Please, won't someone help her up? No!
Uh, what happened? I... I'm not sure. What am I running for? What are any of us running for? Stop them! Don't let them escape! Ah, good Prince Joshua. Come to the end of the road, have we? Everyone? Talon, wait. Talon, I, I... I... I can't go in there. I shouldn't be here. Talon, you're back! We were frantic! Uncle, I saved him! We can save them! We can save all of them! Saved who? How? Wh what are you talking about? Look, Uncle! Ferris is human again! My word! You returned him from the boneyard! Go on. Tell him how it happened. His heartstone was not loose in a scuffle and... How close to him were you? He was trying to crush her in his arms. I was? Uh, I, I can't remember. Ah! What just happened out there? Someone explain to me what just happened out there! If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes! That... that talon creature... Destroyed a skeleton warrior. Hmm. It's the Heartstone. It appears that without it, a warrior regresses to a weak, fleshy state. Ah! You mean my skeleton warriors are vulnerable? So it would appear. And you, most of all. Why am I most vulnerable? Isn't it obvious? If I were to be, well, refleshed, you could return me to my skeleton warrior state. Who would re-skeletonize you? As soon as the converters are in place, we need everyone to move out. Right. I'll map out routes to the next safe camp. Ferris has changed. Of course he's changed. We saved him from the warriors. Did we? Ferris may never be strong enough for battle ever again. Talon, we need that cycle! It would appear he needs it more. Everyone in Lambda Group, mount up and prepare to head out on my signal. Guardian! Skeleton warriors in the cave are cut off! Ferris! Better move out, sir! You haven't got much time! Time enough, thanks to you. You... you faced the Skeleton Warriors. You saved us. I... I have to go now. Come back to us when you're ready. If those humans now possess a means of destroying my Skeleton Warriors, then I am left with but a single choice. I must destroy them, and quickly! Come, bad dog. Peace is such an abstract thing. Is it the comfort one takes in one's friends and family, or the respite one occasionally finds from one's own soul? Or does one achieve peace in the final silence of one's enemies before they make their peace with you?
these messages. We'll be right back. That you did. This is so much fun having my own Minecraft character. Ready? Pause. Now make sure that you guys go over to that little button down at the bottom and. Oh, ready? Now, Steve, do it at the same time. What? Bam! Max smash that like button. And if you have not already, subscribe. Make sure that you head over to our KJ in the Yizzle page. Like and subscribe over there. You can find us on Instagram and you can find us on Twitter. So go check us out over there. Now, we want you, as we have been speaking about, to go find your favorite video and go share that video and get the link and send it in to us so that we can enter you in for the giveaway that we have, the Halloween giveaway that we will be deciding upon the Saturday after Halloween. We'll have the drawing and someone is going to win, but you have to get that link and you have to get it into us so that you can be entered in for it. And we have our tradition to keep. So Steve Izzle has a very special painting to share with us today. Do you not, Steve? Yes. I painted on a tiny little canvas. It's blue, but behind it, it has words. It says, Mom, Dad, Love. Aww, Steve loves he, hers, Yizzle's mom and dad. Someone loves somebody. And 
our resident artist from the Max Squad, Jason Thompson, has a wonderful piece to show us one last time from the Jason Thompson collection. Here it is! Now, if you have a piece of art that you would like to share with the world, send it in to us. We will showcase it right along the yizzles. All you have to do to do that is send your piece to smc.maxout at gmail.com. We will get it. We will put it up. Now we're getting out for the day, but before we go, we have to remind you that the marathon, that's right, the eight-hour Halloween marathon is coming on Halloween night from 4 p.m. to 12 p.m. That means that you can take your kids trick-or-treating before and it will be on and come back later and it'll still be on. It doesn't matter when you leave as long as it is between 4 and 12, we'll be there for you. So make sure that you check that on your to-do list for Halloween, everyone. But until then, where do they need to be on Saturday mornings? They need to be outside trick-or-treating and then come back and watch our show. Where is that show going to be? On Saturday, Saturday morning, come to Max My name is Belbo, Chief Inspector Belbo. This report is the result of my investigation into the deaths attributed to the so-called Giant of Geneva. I have forbidden my publishers to release it until after my death. I believe it will prove once and for all the existence of the so-called Monster of Frankenstein! <laughs> Sir Cal, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Our creation needs only one more thing. The spark. The spark of life. Sir Cal, hurry! We need the power now! But, Victor, I'm not sure What that... is it? We are about to accomplish something that scientists have only dreamed of, and we haven't a moment's time to waste now. We're going to bring hope to every person afraid of dying. Victor, have you considered the moral implications of what you're about to do? Damn it, man! <clears throat> I'm afraid your personal moralizing speeches will have to wait a while. <clears throat> Turn it on! Remember, Doctor, this is your decision. We must have more.
I want more power right now. I can't. It'll blow up. I want more. Yes. Oh, my God. He moved. My creation. Listen to me, my child. I have given you life. I warned you that no, no! Huh? What? What's going on? The generator has been destroyed. Uh, why does it have to be now? Sukel, Sukel, wake up! We've done it, Sukel. He's alive! Just given life to a monster? Destroy him, Sir Kel. You hear? Mm -hmm. You will have to help me. I don't have to follow your orders anymore. I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen to me. Shut up and make yourself useful. Here, take this. <gasps> take it. You mean kill him? We must not permit this hideous monster to wreck my research and my entire life's career. I'll make it worth your while. Now do it. <gasps> Doctor, wait. Hey! Uh, uh, Dr. Victor, look out! Take this! Trust me. 
was now that I became closely involved in these grisly events, events which stretch the limits of my imagination, and the memories of which will stay with me for the rest of my life. Well, well, the peddler. He was murdered, but by whom? There's a piece of him this big that's missing, Inspector. Something made a meal of him. We found pieces of him everywhere. Apparently, the murderer gobbled up quite a bit. Hmm. Any witnesses? No one saw anything. <laughs> ah, yes, the criminal. You have quite a sense of humor. Hey, Inspector Belbo. Hmm? Look, over there. Footprints? Hmm. They're too big to be a man's prints. You're right, but they don't look like the tracks of an animal either. They look like the footprints of some kind of monster. A monster, eh? Let's just see. Careful! Ah, oh, she's come back. Madam, the doctor has returned. His coach has just arrived. Oh, oh. You've come back. Oh, Victor. Oh. Oh, my dear, how I've missed you. Mm. Where is Emily? She'll be home soon. Come, I'll make you a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. How is Emily? Fine. She's visiting your father. She adores the old man. Lucky, I'm done now. Well, Grandpa, I gave you Mom's letter, and then I did some cleaning up in the cabin. Thank you very much, Emily. It's time you went home. Are you sure you'll be all right, Grandpa? Go on, your father will be waiting for you. Yeah? Philip? Over here. You'll see Emily home, won't you? Sure. Bye. Are you ready to go, Emily? Okay. Say, why don't you come live with us, Grandfather? Well, now. I can't see so well anymore, but I know this place like the back of my hand. I'm comfortable here. Is there anything else I can do for you? You've done plenty. I appreciate your having come over to clean up for me. Now, go home. Your grandpa. I like him a lot. But why does he live alone, away from his family? I'm not sure. But it seems that Dad and Grandpa are always fighting bitterly whenever they're around each other. That's too bad. I want to thank you for taking such good care of Grandpa. No need to thank me. I love that kooky old guy. <laughs> oh, wow. Wild roses. I love them. I think I'll get some for my dad. be enough. Let's go home. Okay, Lucky. Let's go home now. Ugh, what's got into you, Lucky? Say, what do you think? You want to have a little dinner with us tonight, Philip? Thanks, Emily, but this is your father's first night home, and he'll want to spend some time with you. Some other time, though. I do want you to meet my dad. Do plan to visit with us soon. Thanks, Emily. I'll do that. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. <laughs> oh, Philip, why are you always so shy? What is it, Lucky? Shh! Lucky, please be quiet. I want to surprise Dad. It 
looks delicious, Emma. Thank you. My pleasure, madam. Nothing's too good for the master on his first night home. Slate, why isn't Emily back yet? I'm sure she'll be back soon. What? Elizabeth. What is it, dear? You are much too indulgent with her. Hello? Hmm? <laughs> why, Emily, come to dear. Daddy. Oh, Papa, I missed you. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. I missed you, too. I brought you a present, see? Ah, well, you know what? I brought you a present, too. Papa! Open it! I can't wait! Wow, what a beautiful scarf! <laughs> oh, nice! Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's so wonderful, all of us being together again. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the blessings we have before us, and thank you for bringing our family back together at this table and for your everlasting bounty. Amen. Well, all right, what's to eat? It all looks so good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Nothing like a good steak. become such a monster. Professor, there must be some way to convince you. Never. This obsession with bringing the dead back to life is not only insane, it's blasphemy. Why waste time on meaningless moral lessons? This is a concern of science. Son, morality should be of more concern to us than anyone. For morality is the fabric of civilization and must be most closely guarded by those of us who have the power to abuse it. I don't care what you think. I'm going ahead with my experiments. Victor, listen to me. Victor! Huh? Are you feeling better? We were all a little worried about you, darling. Did Emily go to her grandpa's house yet? Yes. It's quite wonderful the way they get along and enjoy each other's company so much. Why does he have to live all by himself in the mountains? I think he must really hate me after all. How can you say that? He just enjoys living by himself. <gasps> huh? It sounds like Lucky has been hurt. Who cares about a dumb dog? I'm going to bed. Good night. Oh. I believe we can begin now. We're all here except our maid. And you trust her, I assume. Excuse me. Huh? Chief, nothing stolen. It doesn't look like a burglary. The animal ripped apart. There was hardly anything left of him, sir. Lucky! Oh. <laughs> no, please, stop crying. In time, you will forget all about this. It was unforgivable of me to bring it up. Leave us now. Go on, you inconsiderate moron. Oh, yes, sir. You mentioned you haven't found anything missing. Is that right? Well, I... Not a thing. Well, he's no thief. Ah, refreshment. Splendid. Fresh today. I haven't smelled fresh pastries like these since I was a boy. My mother used to make them for me every weekend. 
The aroma brings back wonderful memories. Ah, I believe I know where this tea is from. Ah, English, isn't it? Uh, huh? We have come to the unfortunate conclusion that a madman may be on the prowl. In fact, we found the victim of an equally brutal murder in the park this morning. This is excellent tea. Funny thing is, we found what looked to us just like a footprint at the scene of the murder, but it was much too big to be that of a human. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh! Oh! I'm so very sorry. Emma, bring me a rag. Quickly, Emma. Please don't worry about it, Dr. Victor. All my clothes are the wash and wear kind. <laughs> oh, well. Take care now. Good night. I'm sorry that I troubled you. Emily, I'm sorry about Lucky, and I do hope you're feeling better soon. Bye now. Oh, yes, huh? I almost forgot. Uh, just one more thing. Dr. Victor, just what is your specialty? Why, natural science. Ah, yes, natural science. Then your experiments cover a broad range of subjects, don't they? Thank you. Try to get some rest. But I thought we had done away with it once and for all. What? Elizabeth, my dear, I want to be by myself for a while. It was just a bad dream. Morning, Dr. Victor. Morning, sir. So you're back. You know I've been looking for you. Why haven't you gotten in touch with me? Well, Doctor you complaining about now? What are you saying? Who do you think you're talking to, Sakel? A man who is about to become a world-famous scientist shouldn't lose his temper so. How dare you, Sakel? You'd better look at me when I talk to you. Yes, perhaps I should. Why are you so shocked, Doctor? You're the one that made me look like this. You're responsible. Now, tell me what you think of it. Oh, what's this? Are you threatening me, huh? I want money, and lots of it. I think 500,000 ought to pay for this eye, don't you? Where would I get that much money? Either you get it for me, or the whole world will learn of your experiments. I'll do as you ask if I can be absolutely sure the monster's dead. Would you like to see the body, Doctor? I would indeed. And then you're going to pay for what you've done to me. Now I can be more hospitable. A faculty meeting has been called and you are invited. I was told to tell this to the illustrious Dr. Victor the moment he walked in the door. Faculty meeting? <laughs> Your slave is going to set himself free, Dr. Victor. And he won't have to grovel for you or anyone else ever again. A faculty meeting? What on earth could it be about? What could have happened? Come in, come in. Gentlemen, I am at your service. Welcome, Dr. Victor Frankenstein. 
Well done. Dr. Frankenstein, it's my pleasure to welcome you as the newest member of the International Society of Natural Science. Congratulations, Doctor. Well uh, done. Uh, well done, Doctor. Do you mean I'm now a member? Precisely, Doctor. And again, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I've done it. I've become a member of the Society. Nothing can stop me. I'll be famous throughout Europe. There is something in my way. Of that. Eat up, kids. We've got a lot of chores to finish this afternoon. Huh? <laughs> oh, the society? Yes, dear. Finally. After all these years, they selected me. Oh, oh my darling. I always knew they would. Madam, doctor, look at what they've done. Emma. What is it now? Oh. <gasps> oh, oh, our garden. It's been trampled. Who would do such a thing? Oh, how awful. Hmm. Doctor, look at that. Huh? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh. oh, it's just a footprint, Victor. It's all right, dear. It's too big to have been made by anything human. How can it be possible? <laughs> Five hundred thousand. It looks so small, eh? <laughs> hey! Hey! Are you positive that you killed him? Sure. Although, although what? Well, you did find those footprints. You mean you're not sure if you finished them off? I must be certain I must. You hear? What if he is still alive? Why should you care? Don't tell me you're worried he's going to take his revenge on you, Doctor. What are you getting at? Never fear. I'll take care of everything. Leave it to me. Members of the Natural Science Committee shouldn't have to worry about their personal safety. Stop it! Stop it, Sakel! What do you think, Doctor? Do you think I'll be able to make a fortune out of my misfortune? <laughs> oh, that Sakel. Oh, at least here I have some peace. What's that? <gasps> Are you all right? Who would do such a thing? I don't understand it. How could he have found me? It's just not possible. He couldn't follow me. It's just my imagination. It must be, but then who's responsible for all this? Huh? Why, he's here. Now, I'll see. Must hide yourself. The monster is here. Darling, you've had another nightmare. There's no one here but us. Calm down. Oh, I don't understand. Oh, dear. Oh. My mind. I'm losing my mind. Oh, God. I can't let that happen. No. Victor? 
But I know I saw it. Ah, this is delicious. <laughs> ah. You can't believe there's a monster until there is one. <laughs> Franken! <laughs> Franken! <laughs> now I understand. Uh -huh. You scum. So it was you, Sakel. You're the one responsible for everything that's happened to me and my family, aren't you? <laughs> right. You guessed it, Doctor. Just to remind you, who is the boss? How oh, dare you, you pig! No, you don't want to cause a scene, do you, Doctor Victor? Society member? What's that? I'd hate to see you become an ex-society member. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a man you can threaten, you hear? <clears throat> then perhaps I had better make the world aware of your monstrous problem. <laughs> How dare you try to blackmail me? You dare accuse me of that? Of doing something that is criminal? After what you've done to me, doctor? Or have you forgotten? You're responsible for my suffering, Doctor, and you must pay for that. What is it that you want, Sakel? Just $10,000. I feel that should be fair payment for my eye. Every month, until your death. What, are you mad? <laughs> I don't care how you do it. You can sell your house or sell your daughter for all I care. I don't care how you do it. You just get me that money, you understand? And what if I refuse? <laughs> I've already given you everything you asked for, and it's nearly bankrupt me. Now you'll get no more. Mm, we'll see about that. I'll be waiting for you tomorrow night at the wharf at Loch Lehman. Don't forget, tomorrow night. So, Kelly, you seem to be forgetting something. Legally, you're just as responsible as I am, and you could also go to prison. <coughs> Fool. He's still concerned with the niceties of society and the law. Well, here's the law. <laughs> What a headache. This is one of the worst cases we've ever had. You mean to tell me you haven't found one clue to his identity? Sorry, Chief, but every lead has been a dead end. We better come up with something. Soon. This madman could strike again any time, anywhere. <sighs> We're doing the best we can, Chief. Honest. Ah, with no results. Chief, you'll think we're crazy. But the evidence has led us to believe it's not human, but some kind of a monster. Huh? A monster? That's impossible, Detective. And you know it. But, sir, everyone who's seen it has given us the same description. They say it's too big to be a man. That's great. All right, tell me about these sightings of this thing that's supposed to be inhuman. Someone sighted it yesterday on a farm north of town. Well, so what happened, huh? It killed and then devoured about a dozen chickens. Uh-huh. The monster attacks chickens. Terrific. <coughs> Hey, you! Get away from there! Get... Oh, my God! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. A monster! Oh! Oh! oh. No! No! Oh. Oh. No! Oh. Hmm. You are positive? That's what he was saying? Ronkin? Yes, sir. Repeated it several times, according to the report we got from the farmer. Ah, uh, Franken. Why Franken? Why say that unless he... Are you sure that is the word he used? Yes, sir. The witness was positive. I hope for all our sakes that farmer was mistaken. Emily, Dr. Victor's daughter, aren't you? Oh, aren't you Papa's assistant? Yes, though the doctor and I no longer see eye to eye. <gasps> <gasps> oh, my, sir, what happened to you? Your eye! Someone in the laboratory got careless. By the way, you should let your father know I still remember his secret. What secret is that, sir? <laughs> If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, would it? Your father should be the one to tell you. Why don't you ask him? What's it about? Like I said, it's his secret. Let him tell you about it. Got to go now. Give him a message for me. Tell him I saw you out here. 
and that I'll be waiting for him on the wharf at Loch Maven. As we read, don't forget to give him the message. Bye. <laughs> Have a nice day, Emily. He what? You mustn't pay attention to anything he said. But what is your secret, Father? And what did he mean you knew the story behind his eye being missing? There are some things that a child your age shouldn't know. But you mustn't keep a secret from me. And if you won't tell me, then I'll go ask him what really uh -huh. happened. Come back, Emily. Come back here at once. Uh, now do what I tell you. Uh, let me go. Oh. Are you mad? What are you doing? Just what I have to. Uh, no. Are you staying there? You hear? doing this? What's going on? Now just stay out of this, Elizabeth. But Victor! This family will never be the same. <laughs> All right, Sakel. This time you've gone too far. I wouldn't be able to bear the shame of Emily's learning of my monstrous creation. Sakel cannot be allowed to live. Let me in, Victor. Let me in. Just wait a minute. I'm sure the doctor knows what I'll do if he doesn't show up. Now that I know where to find his little girl. What? Uh. Who's there? Mm. Mm. I'm scared of my own shadow tonight. <laughs> <gasps> So, you're still around, are you? You, it's not possible. Wrong, Gun. Brunken. years on the force, I've never seen anything that's turned my stomach as much as this. It wasn't a drowning, Chief. It looks like he was dead before he hit the water. 
I'd say the most probable cause of death was having his neck broken. You are a very bright boy, aren't you, Sergeant? Say, thank you very much, Chief. There are signs of a struggle, and this gun was nearby. Huh? Let me have a look. Nice weapon. Well maintained. Recently fired. It couldn't be the murder weapon, Chief, because he was killed by hand. Huh? Hmm. I'm very impressed. I'm so happy that I'm working with men who are so acutely perceptive. Thank you. I'm honored, sir. Hmm. Huh? I'm sure you are. All right, now. Are we absolutely positive this is Mr. Sukel, Dr. Victor's assistant? Yes, sir. He and I went to the university together in Geneva. You did? Well, isn't that nice? Now tell me about him. Please, Emma, please don't go. You've been like a second mother to Emily. You know how much she'll miss you. Please reconsider. You've always been kind to me. But now there's an evil presence here. I am oh, sorry, but I must stop. leave this place. Don't go. Uh, oh. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, excuse me. So Emma's decided not to work here anymore. Didn't she say why? No. I just can't understand why she left. Mm. There's more to this than meets the eye. That woman looked very frightened. What's this? Shame on you, young man, for stealing that farmer's food. Oh! What do you want now? Doctor, I am sorry that I must trouble you so often. All right. So get on with it. The truth is, I came here to return something. Gotcha. That's not mine. I don't even own a weapon. Hmm. Oh, well, my mistake. I suppose the gun must belong to somebody else. Gotta go now. Oh. Did you know that your assistant was found murdered? He's dead. But, Doctor, aren't you shocked to hear about this? Uh, of course. He was an excellent assistant. Yes, I guess he must have been. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken him with you for that month you spent in England. It was an academic sabbatical. We went there to do some research together. Strange choice for a sabbatical. A run-down old place like Snowden Castle. What makes you say that? You weren't trying to duplicate your father's work? Mm. No, I wasn't. I wish I could be sure of that. You can. Huh? Oh, Elizabeth. Madam, I... Inspector, I accompanied my husband on that trip to England. While he was there, he wasn't near a laboratory. I assure you... Good. I'm sure you're right. We'll say no more about it. Goodbye, Doctor. I'm very sorry to have bothered you, Madam. Oh, I almost forgot. One of the local farmers said he saw some kind of monster. Strange. All it said was the word Franken. <gasps> huh? Isn't that odd, Dr. Victor? Franken. Franken. Frankenstein. Hmm. Hmm. He knows. He knows. Tell me, darling, what does he know? I'm too ashamed to tell you. Darling? that by yourself, Emily? Of course. I can milk her myself. Mom came with me today, and she'll help me so we can make a really great cake for you. Oh! Uh oh <laughs> Hey, you laugh. I'm glad. You haven't laughed for a long time, Emily. Sounds nice. Oh, really? 
You bet. I guess it has been a while. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that the two of you have been having problems. Is there anything I can do to help? What concerns me most is that we've always told each other everything. But now I can tell that he's hiding something from me, something that's disturbing him. My dear, we've all done some things that we're ashamed of. But the follies of youth are of no concern now. Unless he started again. Father, the world cannot remain ignorant of the work you have done that has resulted in the creation of life. The story must be told. The creation of life is different than bringing someone back from the dead. It's dangerous. It's wrong. Nothing you can say will stop me. The world must be made to recognize your brilliance. Tell me what it is. What? For Victor's sake, you must tell me. I love Victor and I want to help him. I'm not sure I can. I once thought that I could be a god, but then I saw that by creating life, I was doing something that was terribly wrong. Are you telling me that what the inspector implied is true, that Victor's made some kind of monster? I don't know. But you suspect it, don't you? Tell me why. It was a very long time ago, Elizabeth. Poor old lady. Worked for Dr. Victor, didn't she? Yeah. Name was Emma. Strange thing is, is that the coroner said something frightened her so much that her heart just stopped beating. In other words, she was literally scared to death. Yes, I believe the coroner is right, and I think I know what she saw. Whatever it is, it must be starving. We found bits of roots he'd been eating, and all of her belongings are covered with bite marks. It seems the monster needs a great deal of food, which gives us a clue as to where he'll strike next. We'd better get back to town, and fast. May you enjoy long life and happiness. Oh, happiness to the broad Congratulations. Go ahead and kiss her, you monkey. Come on, because if you don't, I'll come over there and do it for you. <laughs> uh, well. Mm. Ooh, oh, oh, the lights are out. The lights. The lights. Huh? Well, what happened to the lights? Hey, who's that? Did you what? invite him? I've never seen him before. I don't what's going on. Uh, uh, Excuse the inconvenience. We'll have these candles relit in just a moment. It's about time. Oh, darling. Call the police. Hurry now. I've got him. <laughs> He's not even phased. Get out of Men, keep your eyes open. He's got to be around here somewhere. And be careful out there. We've got him surrounded, Inspector. This is it. Let's go get him. There he is. He's headed for the mountains. Watch it, guys. Now's our chance. Fire! <laughs> going to have to be extremely careful, men. He's incredibly strong.
you could sing like that. And your accompaniment was wonderful too, Grandfather. I agree, it was great. Well, you could be a professional mm. musician, Professor. Bra. And now for your listening pleasure, here's Dr. Frankenstein. Bra. You know, before he became a scientist, my grandpa really wanted to be a music performer. Oh? Well then, if you want to make your grandpa happy, maybe you should become a professional entertainer yourself, right? Oh, really? You really think so? Sure. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, presenting Emily Frankenstein. <sighs> it's getting colder. I think our fire needs a little help. <laughs> hey, Em, what's wrong? What is it? Uh, what is it? I saw something really big out the window. It could be a bear. A bear? I'd better take the rifle and have a look. I don't see anything. If there was anything out there, it's gone now. He won't bother us anymore. I'm sure I saw something there. Something big. Don't worry, Emily. You've always got Philip around to protect you. He's what you might call your knight in shining armor. <laughs> now, let's sing.
I'm sorry you had to interrupt your busy schedule to come here, Doctor, but my men have found something I think you should see. It's a clue to the case I've been working on. A clue? Yes, it's right behind this door. Follow me. Doctor, right this way. Where is this clue? Now. Look over there. Oh! Keep it away! Oh, oh, oh. Get back, I say! Oh, oh, oh. What's going on? Huh? Okay, that's enough. We found this slide projector hidden in Mr. Sakel's room. Now you must tell me everything. Just how much do you know about this monster, Victor? I know nothing. Now that's a pity. Oh, by the way, I was sorry to hear about what happened to Emma. What? Emma? I'm sorry. I thought you'd been told. Her body was found this morning. What? That's right. Something scared her to death. This obsession with bringing the dead back to life is not only insane, it's blasphemy. It's wrong. Dear God, what have I done? I am guilty and must suffer the consequences. Victor, no! Let go of it, Victor! Elizabeth, let go! You don't understand! I'm not going to let it go! I'm your wife! I don't care what you've done, I love you! Elizabeth... <sighs> you have no idea what I am going through, Elizabeth. Dear, I know you as well as I know myself. I feel... I'm so ashamed. Victor, my darling, I love you. I'm a part of you and always will be, as you will always be a part of me. There isn't anything we can overcome together. Elizabeth, oh, my darling. I know you mean what you say, darling. But if you knew of the blood in my hands and what I have created, I know even you wouldn't forgive me. Emily, dear. Yes, Grandpa? Emily, I think it's about time for you to be going home. You've been here a long time. I'm sure your parents miss your company. No. Emily, you can't fool me. You don't want to go because of Philip. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> Why don't you ever visit us at home? Mm, why do you ask? Father has a secret, you know. It has something to do with what happened to Lucky and Mr. Sukel, Father's lab assistant. He did something very wrong. I just know it. Everyone has secrets, Emily, but that doesn't necessarily mean they've done anything wrong. Perhaps it's something he feels that you're too young to understand. So long, Professor. Be back as soon as I can. Philip, where are you going? Philip is going to town to pick up some things for me. I'm sure he'd enjoy your company. Oh, I'll walk partway with you. To atone for my sins, I must destroy what I've created. Do I have a visitor? I don't see very well. Please make yourself at home. I have no food to offer you, I'm afraid, but I do have some goat's milk. All right? Philip, when will you be coming back? In two or three days. Can't you come back sooner? I'll try. Say, you should be getting back. Wouldn't want him to get worried about you, Emily. You don't have to worry about me, you know. Bye. So long. Here, try this. Oh, so it's you. You'll be safe here. Emily. Oh, Grandpa, the monster's here. Hurry, we have to run away. <gasps> Stay away from him, monster. Oh, ah! Grandpa, get up. Emily, stop it. 
Everything is all right now. But Grandpa... He won't bother you. So don't worry about it, Emily, okay? All right. But I'm scared. No! No, come back! You see? That was nothing to worry about. I may be blind, but I can tell an awful lot about a person, even without my vision. Far too many people judge their fellow man by their outward appearance. I'm afraid for him, Emily. If he gets too close to town, he'll probably be killed. No! I missed him. Stay inside. Emily, don't permit your father to kill that man. You have to try and stop him. Right. Papa! Papa, where are you, Papa? Papa? <gasps> He's around here somewhere. Huh? <gasps> if only... It's almost as if I were his father and he my son. Sorry, but what I have created I must destroy, my son. The time has come. Drunken! Ah! Drunken! He's gone, but I'll find him. He couldn't have gone far. Ah, oh, you've come back. I heard shooting. Have you seen Emily? Huh? This is her. Are you all right, Emily? Let's bring her into the bedroom. Ah, you're awake. You're all right, sweetheart. Oh, Grandpa, a bear attacked me. It's okay. You were very lucky that he was there to save you. <laughs> ah, it's okay. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to make you a sturdier chair of your own. Oh, Vlad! Are you sure? He's been wounded in the arm. I guess your father must have shot him.
I made that stool strong enough to hold an elephant. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, little birdies. How sweet. Come on down here. Hello. Hi there. Hi <laughs> there. He was so mean before. He's so nice now. I think he was treated badly, Emily, and he reacted the same way that most people do. You see, he may not look much like a human, but he has a human heart, and it was only natural for him to act like one. For better or for worse. I don't understand. Well, never mind. It wasn't important. What is important is that everything is new to him, like those birds. I don't think he's ever seen any before. Frunken? Wow. Do you know what those things on your shoulder are? Birds. Uh, bud. That's not a butter. That's called a bird. Try my name now. L M M M L. Not bad. Emily. M. Hello. Oh, well, wouldn't you know it? My name you can't say. <laughs> Don't you worry about it, Emily. He'll be saying it soon enough. Soon he'll talk just like the rest of us. Uh, hello. Uh, I give up. <laughs> Destroy him. 
Elizabeth and I will never again be happy together if I fail. No matter what happens, I'll always love you, my darling. If anything were to happen to you, I don't think I could bear it. May God protect you from harm. I can't wait to see Emily. Boy, will she be surprised. I made it back in just one day. Huh? Oh! I've got to get back to town as fast as I can. I've got to get some help. That's the monster that everybody's been looking for. God knows what he'll do to Emily and the Professor. I hope I'm not too late. Are we just gonna stand around and talk about it, or are we gonna do something? My wife is scared to go out of the house. We gotta house protect our homes, our families. This is a police matter. If you go up there as an unruly mob, someone's going to get hurt. You can't stop us. He won't get away. Come on, what are we waiting for? Listen, you have no idea how dangerous this thing is. It's We've heard of killing all of you. We know what to do. Come on. Let's go get him now. Hey, listen to me. Come back here, you fool. Mad dogs. All of them. All right, let's go. I can't wait. I'm going up there. There he is. Get him! Get him! Ah! Who's hunting at this time of year? They're shooting at him. Drunken. He needs my help. Why don't you answer me? somewhere with your father. Oh, oh, I've got to go find them. Me. cottage. Emily may be in danger. That's great. Now we've got a forest fire. My God, what a mess. Oh, oh, oh. oh my head. Oh. Maybe we should move away from the fire, Inspector. It's pretty hot up here. Stop whining. Think of what it's like for the people trapped in there. Ugh. Duncan! Oh, Lord, be merciful and... Protect him, he's innocent. Go back, Franken. Turn back and save us all. Forget about me. Go back! Back. 
Duncan. Thank you, my son. Goodbye, my son. my darling, I love you. I'm a part of you and always will be. Just as you will always be a part of me. Together, there's nothing you and I can't overcome. So now I have the blood of my darling Elizabeth on my hands as well. <laughs> Dr. Victor, you have my condolences. We're doing everything we can, but my men still haven't come up with a way to stop him. He's hiding somewhere in the mountains. I must do it. Huh? I must be the one. It's my responsibility. Why was your family singled out as his target, Dr. Victor? That's what I can't understand. Your daughter, your wife, your father, everybody, in fact, that you were close with. No, Franken would never do that. Emily, how can you say that? If that horrible creature hadn't come up here, both your mother and your grandfather would still be alive and well today. Oh, there he is. Huh? After him. He's going back into the woods. Come on, you men. We found him. Get the monster. He's still breathing. He's alive. Oh, thank God. Oh, Grandpa, please don't die. Drunken. No. No, Grandpa. He couldn't. He wouldn't hurt you. Emily? I'm going to take care of that thing myself. What? Philip! No, Philip, come back, come back! Philip, come back! Emily's grandfather and her mother.
my mother, you killed Philip, and now Grandpa may die. You can't go on hurting people. You've caused too much pain already. My mother. <laughs> belief in God. So There's no sanctuary here for the likes of you. You frightened poor Emma to death, you tried to kill my father, and you murdered my wife. You must die. I will kill him or die trying in this holy place, I swear. So you were saved by Frumpkin? Correct. If it hadn't have been for him, I would have burned to death in that inferno. Then what about Mama? He didn't kill your mother. He tried to save her, but he came too late. Carrying me, he just couldn't get to her fast enough. He made a valiant attempt, Emily, but she was gone. But they're hunting him for killing her. No, he's guiltless. Your father and I created him. Therefore, his acts are our responsibility. So, so that's, that's my, my father's secret. We are the ones who attempted to unravel the mysteries of nature. Therefore, we are the ones who should be punished, not poor Franken. You mean the dragon's teeth? Now he's trapped for sure. Oh, what'll I do?
Open fire! Created, I will destroy. You are of the dead and must return from whence you came. Why won't you die? No. Papa, don't do it. Emily, what are you saying? Because of him, your mother died a horrible death. But that's not true. He didn't kill anybody. In fact, he saved Grandpa's life when Grandpa was in the fire. He's no murderer. What? He would have saved Mama, but he couldn't. Since Franklin was carrying Grandpa, he couldn't get to her. Grandpa said it was you that made Frank, and you created him. He's a part of you, and killing him would be like killing me. I was wrong. Hmm? Oh, Franklin. I'm sorry. Emily. Emily. My name. You said my name. Oh, thank you, Franken. Emily. You're no monster. You're my friend. just can't go on. Elizabeth. <laughs> and so the monster perished, as did his creator, Dr. Frankenstein. Though the doctor may have been misguided in his attempts to create life, I often ask myself, did he create a monster? Or was it mankind's inability to accept the outwardly monstrous form of what he had created that caused us to treat him in a way that made his violent actions inevitable? I've never been able to answer that question, and I don't suppose I ever will.
scenes. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own.